Hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan Recover, Democrat Sadiq, also known as a Black Yo Britter. And this is the Demetra K Show, where we promote Black love, knowledge, understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always strive to do better. I'd like to say a big giant thank you and welcome to YouTube, X, and Facebook. You are the other side of the conversation. But not only are you just viewers, you are family, and we sometimes share the link so that you guys can come up here and speak your mind, ask a question. All I ask is two things, is that you keep it to the subject at hand. Don't come on here talking about the sky is blue and the deep blue sea and all the fishies that's flying and all this other mess. Uh, talk about the topic. Also, if I've not seen you on here before, please show me your face. If you have a picture like this, let's see, in lieu of you moving around, I want to see you before I bring you up to the big screen to verify that it is, you know, somebody that's about something behind that picture and not some shenanigans because we've had that happen before. And guess what? It ain't going to happen again. Nevertheless, uh, today we're going to spend some time talking about uh, the life of Latasha Harlins. Now, this is something I like to do every year. Uh, Donovan and I were actually talking before we came on here and he made a good point and said it's a shame that a lot of people don't know who Latasha is and uh, her what she did to spark what happened during the uh, L.A. riots, if you will, South Central in 1992. Um, so I'm going to give you uh, give you um, a little history about that. And I usually do it around this time of the year because on March 16th uh, is when her life was taken from her by Soon Ja Do, a Korean-American uh, store owner. Of course, I'll get into all of that. And of course, we could talk about some other things. I'm going to leave it an open topic. So if you guys want to talk about some stuff that's on your mind, I don't care what it is, we can discuss it uh, for the time that we are here. But in the meantime, let's see who's on here before I give it to Donovan. Uh, we have Don't Need No Man. Stop telling me I do. How you doing, Michael? What's going on with you? You said what happened to the dating show? Y'all weren't interested. But that's kind of on me too. I, I really stopped promoting it. So I'll, I'm going to give it a go. I'm not a quitter. So I'm going to try to promote it again and see if I got, you know, people who want to come up here or send me an email, ask a question or whatever. But I just kind of want to keep it moving because I hate um, like dead air. It's like, so we talked about that for five minutes. What do you want to talk about now? You know, I like to keep it moving. So I'll try it again. Mike, nice. How you doing? I hope you're having a great evening. Quincy X, what's going on? Yes, indeed. Barry, how are you? Uh, you are? <clears throat> and, uh. Just uh, two C's. How you doing? Black America. He said, how you doing anyway? Donovan, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm, you know, the, the comments just just keep me rolling. Barry said, am I going back? The Dusty Donovan going back to the going to the Dominican Republic? Of course, there's problems going on in Haiti. I need to be there to make sure the borders are closed and that wall is built. We don't want them dusty Haitians coming over and, you know, messing up the country and doing whatever we're doing. But no, in all seriousness, you guys, welcome to the show. It's great to have you guys here. Another great day. You guys know what to do. African Diaspora News Channel app. Again, if you want to know what's going on in the African Diaspora, that is a great way to do it. Also, I've been following that app because Brother Phil Scott, he, great minds think alike because he is using a lot of the same talking points that I talk about, but he does it in a, his delivery is a lot better than mine. But same same type of uh, mindset. So I'm kind of happy to do that. So if you guys really want to know what's going on in the African diaspora, that is a great way to do it. Join up, become a member, share, subscribe. You could do it on YouTube. Do a year subscription like, like I do. And that way we can talk about issues without having to worry about these trolls jumping on there and want to, uh, wanting to interject. Also, 100% of your contribution at that bottom scrolling thing there, you see it says, please donate. Cash app, dollar sign Demetra K, PayPal Demetra K at gmail.com or Venmo at Demetra K. 100% of your donation goes to the content creator versus 60%, which 40% of the cut goes to YouTube. So if you would like to donate, that would be great. Any donation that you guys give it is greatly appreciated. And we really, really think, thank you guys for supporting the channel. So let's get into this topic, Demetra, because you know, back in that day, Latasha Harlins being from the West side, that was a very, very big issue just before the OJ Simpson trial uh, verdict came out. Tension was high in LA. And I remember I was stationed here at the base and it was a very, very, uh, tense situation in Southern California.
Sorry about that. Uh, I'm gonna put I put this picture up so in case you guys are clueless as to who I'm talking about. I put uh soon ja do very small because that's what she deserves to be very small. Of course, uh the beautiful young sister is that of Latasha Harlan. So um <clears throat> March 16th, 1991, Latasha Harlan's uh walked into Empire Liquor. That was the name of the convenience store that soon and her husband uh owned. And uh, Latasha got a bottle of orange juice from the refrigerator. And for whatever reason, soon the uh, owner there thought that Latasha was going to steal the orange juice. So she began to grab onto Latasha from over the counter, grabbing onto her clothes and her backpack. And Latasha swung her off of her, you know, then soon picks up a bar stool type of chair and flings it at Latasha. So Latasha still having the orange juice. Um, it's, you know, trying to get away from her soon takes out a pistol that I guess she had behind the counter and she shoots Latasha in the back of her head, killing her instantly. Now, uh, her husband was in a car. I guess he was sleeping in a family van. Uh, he heard the commotion. He came in and saw what had happened when he called 911. He told them that the Tasha was trying to hold the store up, right? So police got there and they saw that Latasha, I think the, the orange juice, like a dollar 47 or something like that. She actually had the money in her hand indicating that she had indeed uh, intended on paying for it. Now there were other two other children in the store at the time and they completely during the trial contradicted the testimony of Soon. Soon basically said that Latasha was the aggressor but of course, they got the video footage from the store and they saw the total opposite. They saw that Soon was actually the aggressor. Now, Soon was sentenced to 10 years prison, but uh, the, uh, the judge in the case, Karen uh, Carlins, I think or her name was or something like that. Carlins was her name. She says, well, you know, Soon is really not a problematic person, right? Other than, you know, taking a life of a 15 year old, right? And I could see how she would be under duress as she was robbed before. So what she did was she suspended Soon's uh, sentence and she did not do any prison time at all. All she had to do was pay like, I think it was $500 restitution. Uh, she had to pay the cost of Latasha's funeral and she had to do like 400 hours in community service. So she basically got a slap on the wrist uh, for murdering a 15 year old black girl. But I remember when that was going on, the media painted Latasha as though she was, you know, a criminal, right? She was this monster. They made her seem, and that's why I uh, chose this picture of her smiling because the other pictures they put up, she wasn't smiling. And that was the image that the media <coughs> put forth of her, you know, kind of stoic, not mean, you know, but just, it, it, and I think they did that on purpose. And they had soon looking like she was the victim. So they painted an unfair narrative of Latasha. But the truth of the matter is, so again, you know, soon gets away with it. Latasha loses her life or it was taken from her at the age of 15. Now, Latasha had aspirations of being a lawyer um, and other things, an artist. She liked to draw and things like that. So she there was things that she was trying to do in life. Had she lived, she would have been... 48 years old, birthday, January 1st, 1976. And so there, she, most people who knew her, and of course there's a documentary on Netflix called uh, Love Song for Latasha, beautiful story. I wept watching that, you know, because they talked to her childhood friends and, you know, just different people. And they just painted a very beautiful picture of her saying that she was a loving kid and, you know, things like that. Of course, that's not the story the media told. But then soon, from what I understand, is still alive. And in fact, she lives in Lancaster. And I know the exact, she owns another uh, convenience store. I know exactly where it is. You know exactly where it is. And, you know, her uh, her son actually works there. But her customer base is predominantly black, right? They hang out there and all kind of stuff. And so this year, as I thought about Latasha, I thought about the Asian hate crime bill, COVID-19 bill is what it's called, but it was made uh, for Asians, <coughs> Asian American Pacific Islanders, because during COVID and uh, the pandemic, 
there was this uptick, right, from what the media was telling us, uh, you know, all this Asian uh, violence, people were attacking Asians, and of course they made black people <coughs> the boogeyman, painting us as the aggressor, right? Places like New York, Sacramento, and things like that. But as I thought about Latasha today, I thought, how odd is it? Had Latasha lived, she still wouldn't have had a bill to protect her as a black girl, a black woman, if she would have lived, right? But soon, who took the life of Latasha has a bill that protects her. Soon is a convicted murderer. She was convicted of voluntary manslaughter, right? She's a convicted murderer. And today, if you were to go up to her and say something crazy about her or attack her, she would be able to invoke the Asian hate crime bill and you would go up the river or whatever they do to you for exacting a hate crime on an Asian. But even today, black people don't have a hate crime. But thinking about this, that Asian woman, Korean American is what she is. I want to be specific. Uh, she could take the life of a black girl, get away with it. And she's protected. Now, also, we know that last year there was another case that took place. Uh, a little boy by the name of Cyrus Belton. He was 14 years old. Rick Chow, the one that shot him. <coughs> excuse me. He was accused, he being Cyrus, of stealing four water bottles. <coughs> I'm sorry. But he never did. And he was chased down the street by Rick and his son. Um, and they lied and said that he had a gun. They never found a gun uh, at all. But Rick decided to shoot him in his back, taking the life of that 14-year-old. I looked to try to see what happened to that because that came uh, that happened uh, in May of 2023. Sounds like maybe Rick uh, pled guilty. I don't know. Um, I couldn't find anything. So maybe if you guys can tell me exactly what happened. But even then... Rick would have been protected if a hate crime was exacted upon him. And uh, little Cyrus uh, did not have anything to protect him. And I don't care what nobody says to shoot children, you know, because you think they're stealing. Stealing does not equate to a, a death sentence, right? You call the police or whatever, especially orange juice and water, right? But all those years later, you think about somebody like Cyrus who was murdered by um, an Asian American, nothing's changed because in a way, some of them have felt emboldened to be able to do that to black people and they feel like they're going to get away with it. Why else would you, and, he, and, and Rick Child chased uh, Cyrus quite a ways away from the store. So he wasn't in danger. He was running away, but nothing in his mind told him, hey, I better stop, maybe call the police. He decided to shoot him over water bottles and probably really thought he was going to get away with it. And so I want to talk about this also is because, of course, we know <coughs> we are in election season. And, of course, during the Cyrus thing, this happened in Columbus, South Carolina. Uh, Jim Clyburn made a statement basically saying, well, black men and black boys are in danger, blah, blah, blah. Right. But it's like you've been in the House of Representatives, you know, for over 30 years and you've done nothing to protect the life of black men and boys or something like that. But you were gung ho to sign that Asian hate crime bill. When it came across, it was unanimous on both sides, right? And Joe signed it and Kamala was there clapping, but nothing specifically for black people. So I really want everybody to think about that, especially during election season, that Latasha's life would not have been protected to this day. Cyrus' life was not protected, but the people who took their lives are protected because they have a, a hate crime bill specific to them. And I'm going to get to the rest of you guys' comments. Donovan? Man, um, that was a great intro because it brings back a lot of lot of memories. Um, this was a young girl. I mean, I was a young man at the time, and she was a young girl uh, doing that. I remember the video on KTLA. They were showing the video of her actually being executed because, like I said, this was an execution. This girl was shot in the back of the head, and this lady did not hesitate to uh, do that. And it brought back a lot of uh, memories where things were like really ranching up between the black and Asian communities. Um, you know, here again, here, here's my question. Excuse me, you guys. How is it that people could, could migrate to this country, legal or illegal, they could get businesses and prop them up in our neighborhoods, and we 
can't even get storefront businesses to support our own communities. What kind of laws are these? So 1993 was a very pivotal year. Why was it very pivotal? Because in 1993, there was a, a wave in the House of Representatives that brought to power a lot of black politicians. Guess where uh, most of those black politicians are now? They are still in the House of Representatives. Let me give you guys some names. Maxine Waters came to power in 1993. Sheila Jackson Lee came to power 1992, 1993. Jim Clyburn came to power 1992, 1993, around that time. Uh, so on, so on, so forth. So you're talking about people that have been influential in the Democratic Party for over 30 years. And what do they have to show for it? Absolutely nothing. Again, how many times on this show ha have I said, you have Black people in the right positions? How many Black police chiefs are there across the nation in the major cities? but yet the police culture does not change. You know, it's just sad because this young girl could have had a full exact life. But, but here's the sad thing, Demetra, and people in the chat. Here's the sad thing about the whole thing. We are so desensitized at how we are treated in this country that we just think this stuff is normal. It's been normalized. Black people get brutalized. Oh, well, it's no big deal, you know? It is what it is. So uh, Corliss wants to get on the checks. I know Corliss uh, has a lot to say about this. Um, but I want to say this before I go. It's a loss that we lost that young girl and you should not be executed because you have a um, you want to get some uh, orange juice to drink. You should not be executed for that. And somebody's going to have to pay one way or the other. And I'm not one of those people that be talking about sweet Jesus. In the I'm not going to do all that. OK. I'm not going to do that. Somebody needs to pay some way, somehow, and they are going to pay uh, if we got the right leaders in the right positions. But I do want to say this. Today or yesterday, Kamala Harris says that if they get the House and the Senate, that the Democratic Party, if you guys vote the House and the Senate in, they will codify into law Roe versus Wade and a woman's right to delete her children. The Democrats say they will put that in a law where you can do that. So just something to think about. Absolutely. And Corliss, I'm about to put it up in just a second. I just um, right now I want Corliss to come up. Black America, I see your comments. Uh, I'm 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 100 percent sure now that you are trolling uh, just because some of the stuff you say is just it's like you too old to be that damn insensitive. And I, I, I take it a step further. It's ignorant at this point. Uh, so I just tend to believe, you know, that you're trolling. Maybe you're bored. I don't know. You ain't probably trying to find something to do. Uh, all right. So let's see. Let me get these comments down. Oh, Mawali, how you doing? Says it's very sad and it makes me really mad. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, gee, how you doing? Long time no see. Says, well, the politicians are never going to do anything for black people. So we have to start protecting ourselves and also spend our dollars with ourselves. You have to hit them in the pockets. That's the only thing they understand. And yes, Michael, I want to address your comment too as well. Yes, um, and I, I, I was remiss in saying that, that the L.A. riots, yes, a lot of people think it was just because of Rodney King, but no, it was because of Latasha. Uh, there was a lot of pent-up frustration there in South Central. People were like, okay, that's enough. All right, obviously, Black lives do not matter, no matter who it is, whether it's the police, uh, it's the Koreans, uh, because Korean and um, uh, Black people, uh, there's been a lot of tension there, a lot of, you know, Korean business owners. And then black people were obviously the customers. And like you said, OG, uh, <clears throat> we need to start uh, having our own stuff. But there was a lot of tension. And so a lot of the Korean businesses, uh, whether they were uh, involved or not, they ended up uh, getting burned and destroyed and things like that because it was just like, OK, from the black people's point of view, enough is enough. So that happened to Latasha in 1991 and Rodney King. Uh, that unfolded in uh, 92. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see. You're mindful. Mom, how you doing? Says Black Americans have to wake up and stop by playing race. I mean, I'm sorry, nice. We're too nice. Oops. It says, uh, oh, where'd it go? Uh, it says we're too nice. A lot of people um who don't deserve your comment cut off. And uh, Pamela, how you doing? It says, hey, wait, don't they call them model minorities? Are they? 
I don't know. I've heard that before. And uh, Barney's, how you doing? He says, so glad to see a show dedicated to Latasha Harlins. Yeah, I'm always going to do a show um, every year about Latasha because uh, people uh, have forgotten. Um, I don't think she should be forgotten um, because it was the start of so many things, right? Um, and I don't think any child should be forgotten uh, having her head blown off essentially uh, for being accused of stealing orange juice, you know? And the lady got away with it. I'm going to bring Corliss up in a minute because I know uh, she has some in, uh, intel. Uh, yes, Michael says, I offer my sympathy to Latasha Harlins. Yes. And, um, and I think her mom, um, she had passed on and, you know, her dad. So she was living with a grandma um, and things like that. So she had a lot going on as well, you know, as far as family dynamics. Ruth Stryker, how you doing? Says, um, oh, my gosh, greetings. My family had a liquor store nearby. This was so sad when it happened. This was uh, one huge reason for the LA riots. Yet Rodney King broke the camel's back. We were done. Absolutely. Complex blackness. She says that's the same black America that's always trying to cut Demetra off, right? That's what is uh, in Vegas. He, LA, uh, Vegas, LA. He's somewhere. Who, who, who really knows, right? Out of space. Uh, let me skip down a little bit. Uh, 48 TCO. How you doing? He says, uh, how are they going to pay for those uh, abortions when they're going to give all the jobs to the um, migrants? Good question. So, Arneba, how you doing? Yeah, I mean, come on now. You know, it's like, Black America, what are we doing? Frank, how you doing? Long time no see. He says, if we stop buying from them, there won't be. I totally agree. Uh, Bernie says, I was 15 myself when that happened. <clears throat> I was 20. Um, almost 20. I was 19, actually, uh, when that took place. Uh, yeah, I was logical. Think of how you doing. He says, for one, uh, we are outnumbered in Cali as well. Oh, yeah. Less than 6% now, right? Uh, yeah, you are Black America. You you trolling. He says, you... You don't know where the hell I come from. You don't. You don't know where I come from at all. So, and he says, you know, so you so you got to come from a, a gang culture to have some damn sense. Yeah, to me, if you in a gang, you ain't got no damn sense. Duh. Just Pamela he said, Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman said it's okay for illegal criminals to own a power tool. Yeah. Why? Yeah, and by the way, that that was a judge appointed by Barack Obama, a Democrat. See, we have to keep in emphasizing this because sometimes people put stuff out there and, and they make it seem like it's insignificant, like, well, it's some judge, some random judge. No, judges are selected by presidents that uh, think like they do. That's why they're put on the, 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 these panels. Either they're conservative or they're liberal. And Obama put this, like I said, you guys are seeing the Democratic playbook in real time, in real time. The, the Tyson food thing, they laid off 1,500 uh, citizens so that they can hire 52,000 illegal immigrants. This was the playbook the whole time. So Democratic policies. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to call your face. I put the link up for Corliss if she's still there. Corliss is in YouTube. Come on up. Um, because uh, Corliss has a lot of information in regards to what we're speaking of. Uh, Miss Sweet Tasha says, Wow, this is news to me. The LA riots was due to the injustice actions toward Latasha Harlan. That's why I love this channel and we love you too. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, that was just that, like I said, uh Ruth Tracker said, uh, Rodney King was a straw that broke the camel's back, but people were already lit, right? Because soon the liquor store owner got away with it. She she got clean away with it. So yeah, people were just outraged, right? Hey, baby, how you doing? And and, 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 real, quick, and, 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 and real quick, okay, think about it. you got you had Latasha Harlins that kind of got got the tension going. Then you had the OJ trial verdict, and that that came out. That really lit it off. Then Rodney King happened. And these were things that were like back to back to back, and it just lit up. It lit a fire in LA. And oh, Al, you said Jalen Hurst is paying for the. Uh, how you doing, by the way? The funeral of eighteen year old. Uh, Javon Coles, who was killed here in Houston. I have to, uh, I haven't heard anything about that. So I have to look into that. Um, but uh, Jalen Hurts, big ups to him. He uh, does a lot of wonderful things uh, for black people. So uh, let's see here before I give it to you, Corliss. Uh, black America, I ain't tripping with you no more. You on you here really tripping because talk about nobody cared about Latasha Harlins. I mean, that's you. But we're not going to give no more light to that nonsense. How you doing, Corliss? Well, I'm glad you just ended with that one because I saw that and I was like, look here, Negro. I need you to take your, excuse me, y'all, your black ass somewhere and sit the hell down because I cared. I have kids. 
I was a kid when she got killed. So that could have been me. That could have been my kids. That could be somebody's kids today. What the hell is wrong with you? I mean, in, in, in all reality, I just really want you to go sit somewhere quiet. I don't give a damn if you need to smoke a blunt. You need to do something. Because you tripping. Like, you be tripping, tripping, dude. And it is not cool, the things that you say. It is kind of hurtful, in a way. She's a human being. And it makes me angry simply because her son, I used to go holler at him at the whole liquor store that Demetra is talking about in Lancaster on Division. In Challenger. Like, it's crazy. I had no clue that that was a, that a woman's son. But when I found out, guess what I did? I stopped my people from going there giving them his month, giving them our money. Because at the end of the day, you're right. He got everything in there, honey. It looked like, I mean, it has everything. Everything that black folks want is in there. And that's who hang up, hang out at, up there, go get gas up there. And guess what he doing with your dollars? Take he support this mama. Mm -hmm. So we have to do better. Like, this is crazy. It's sad and it's still happening. Because we go in there and we give them our money. You walk in there to go buy anything from a beauty supply and they up your ass. Oh, I have to make sure you're not stealing. Girl, bye. Like, for real? Do better. And we need to do better starting with ourselves. Stop giving them our money. Because I bought my synthetic hair. And I ain't got no business wearing because all the stuff that's in it now that I didn't found out, I got to figure out maybe I'll be rocking an afro like Demetra. Because oh, he has yes. nothing. <laughs> but I'm not going to continue to shop with them, Timu and none of them. And I love them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not going to give them my money. Yeah. You know, and like you, and I think I learned that from you, that, um, Roy, that's his name, that owns that, you know, in that, at that liquor store. I was like, word? So she's still alive and kicking and moved up to Lancaster. Because that's where a lot of people, um, when they move from Los Angeles, they go to Lancaster, right? It's like land, Los Angeles, I don't know, West, East, or whatever it is. Um, but I was like, oh, word? Wow. I mean, I imagine she's probably in her 70s now, probably, you know, close to 80. But there she is. Still making money hand over fist over black people. And I wonder, do they know that? Do they know that mo the money that they're taking into that store is going into the hands of a woman who murdered a 15-year-old in cold blood and lied about it and, and painted her as the aggressor? It's crazy. And I hate to say it, but we are, sometimes we like the walking dead. I couldn't go in there and spend money after knowing that, you know, and I get it. Sometimes there's a, that's the only store around or whatever, but it's like, think of our people back in the sea. This is, you know, a lot of times people like to talk about the baby boomers and stuff or they just that, the other and, and the silent generation. Cause that's who was around there. And during the, uh, this, uh, bus boycott in Montgomery, they walked, they did what they needed to do. They didn't catch those buses. They, they, for over a year, they walked. It, you know, if he was hurting all of that, but us, we don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't a son, you know, it, it, but it's like, she's still making that money. But as I said, you know, the hate crime bill, she's free as a bird. It, if somebody say or do something to her, she can invoke, evoke that, that bill. Oh, that was a hate crime. And you probably going to do more time behind saying something to her crazy. Then she did for taking the life of a 15-year-old child who was not stealing, who she put her hands on her first and then threw a bar stool at her after, you know, and then, and, and then shot in the back of the head. So it was like, you just up in there hating on black people, but you perched among black people, taking black dollars, but you hate black people. So... Like I said, I'm always going to talk about it. I don't, I don't think we should ever forget Latasha. And like I said, I remember watching that on the news and they made it seem like Latasha was the boogeyman. 
Uh, let me let me ask you guys this because I uh, I don't know if I remember right. Isn't that when Al Sharpton and all the civil rights people were swooping down and telling us to be calm and hey, you know, we're going to work this out, whatever? What did they work out other than letting this woman walk out of the court system with a suspended sentence? I mean, how is that justice for the family? It's not. It was it was more justice for for her family. Uh, because, you know, she really not like that. I can understand how she can be on edge because her store has been robbed before. And that's that's the uh, excuse that the judge gave. She understood. what, But it's like, so this child is going six feet deep. Her family is going to mourn her. But you understand why she was trigger happy? Huh? But Latasha couldn't have went in there and did that to her. And be out, she still be locked up. And 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 and, and real quick, uh, Corliss, Corliss, Demetri, do, do you guys remember when the riots actually did kick off? How the Koreans had armed themselves, and some of the gang members were like shooting at the Koreans and back and forth. That's how bad the tension was. If you were here in Southern California during that time, the uh, the Korean community, and I'm not trying to offer, I'm just telling you the facts, uh, had armed themselves, and you know the gangs were like it, it was like a a, a I just remember on KTLA, you're seeing the uh, the Korean guy jumping behind a barrier and shooting wildly as the riot crowd is coming toward you know that area and stuff. And that's how bad it had gotten. And like I said, if you weren't here in Southern California during that time, you probably you guys probably didn't see all of that stuff that was going on. So it, it, I mean, you know, th th there was some serious tension in, in the uh, Korean community. Carlos, was you gonna say something? My phone was ringing, so I had to knock down the call real quick. But um, I know exactly because I was pregnant with my daughter when the riots had kicked off, and the whole Korea town they were on top of the roofs, roofs with AR-15s. Um, I'm talking about every. It was crazy. It was worse than the Wild Wild West. Like they was not playing. And it was, I, I just couldn't believe, you know, the things that I saw. But yeah, all, all behind what? Y'all want to protect y'all stuff? Like, it's just not that serious. And you know, the crazy thing is, um, Roy's sister is like that. The youngest one that's in the store, she just like her mama. When all, she, well, the whole store be full of us. And somebody will walk in and walk over to the cooler. She has stopped, and she's exactly like that. She's exactly like her mother. Did they burn that store down? I don't know why I think they did. Her the original store, yes. Yeah. So they did. Yeah, she in Lancaster, California. Yeah. Well, I, well, I want to say this to all the brothers across the nation. If anything like that kicks off ever again, a riot like that kicks in, go to the child support office and make sure you burn that down. Okay. Do not forget the child support office. Okay? We playing. <laughs> ha ha. Jokey joke. Last thing we need is somebody said was somebody on the Demetri K show talking about going to the child support office. It's a joke. Parody. Hardy ha ha. That's not feeling. Say you don't date women with weeds. How you know you? Do you run your fingers through they, they, they roots? Before you you talk to him and say let let me let me feel your scalp and easy how you doing says she still were uh walking just like Trayvon's yeah uh, George Zimmerman yeah she got slapped on the wrist. Did they ever do anything in regards to Latasha Harlan like a city ordinance or a a, a memorial statue or anything of, of of that nature that actually you know actually happened because I I don't think they did they did anything not not an apology or anything or even the city representatives, not one of them did anything in regards to uh, calming the uh, community. I don't know if they did. Uh, but of course, Donna, I mean, you and I know that no ordinance they can ever enact would bring her back or justify what they did, you know, because honestly, we tie the ordinances and days and streets and, you know, at, at schools and fields. We're, we're tired of that stuff, right? We, we, we want our loved ones to be here. We don't want their lives to be taken from them unjustly because you feel in a certain type of way about the customers and you set smack dab in the middle of a black neighborhood with your store, but then you don't like black people, but you like black dollars. See, I wouldn't shop for nobody like that. 
that's you know acting crazy toward me you know follow me around the uh, trust me there's been times that that's happened to me and i'm like i don't want none of this stuff yeah complex no. business says there is a part that's been open within the last couple of years so yeah that yeah so a park but again we don't get to take keep your parks protect black people we are an endangered species keep your parks I wouldn't want to, I would feel a certain type of way about playing in a park that says Latasha Harlan's because I'm going to be rethinking about what happened to her. How the hell do you find any glee or joy playing in a park of, of, of a child that was murdered over orange juice? I couldn't do that. Well, let me ask you this, Demetra, and, and anybody in the chat, with less than about 30, maybe 40 Asians in all of Congress, how did they get a bill when you have over 60 CBC members? plus White House staff members that are there that are influential and all this other stuff. How did they get a bill to protect themselves and yet we can't get a bill to this very day to protect ourselves? Well, um, Farrakhan talks about this and he talks about you know the nature of anybody. They set up in our neighborhood. He said, wouldn't you go somewhere where there's a, you know, and, and I'm reason why I'm saying this, this way is, you know, once you set up shop in a neighborhood where you ain't got to do no advertising, you know, it's a gold mine, right? Everybody sets up shop in our neighborhoods because they know we'll go in there and they'll give them our money without really demanding that they put good food in there. They hire somebody black or any of that stuff. We might say, hey, you're going to hire somebody black. No, 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 we're not hiring whatever the case is. And so the other thing is, and, and I, I put those things together because the same thing with politicians. Would you feel compelled to do anything for somebody who would know that they're going to vote for you no matter what they do? You don't have to do nothing for them. They're going to show up to vote because they've had it rammed in their brain. Uh, vote blue no matter who. Oh, my mama, my grandmama was a Democrat, so I'm a Democrat. Republicans are the boogeyman. I'm going to always vote for the Democrat. And then when you try to say, well, you're going to vote for them even though they don't do nothing for you? Yeah, because Republicans, they got that. So... Why would you feel compelled to have to do anything? I don't have to protect those people. They're going to show up for me anyway. They know the Asian being the least in population, although the wealthiest, that has something to do with it too. They know that the Asian, regardless of what part of Asia they're from, they will get together and say, all right, we're not feeling the love here in America. So we're going to organize, whether it's by voting or dollars or something. We don't make America feel the pressure and they know that black people are not in our right minds. We don't have the sense to get together and say, we gonna make them feel something. You know, we gonna boycott, we gonna hold our vote. We gonna do something to let them know our, we are not to be taken for granted anymore. So they don't feel that there's no pressure for them to do that. Come November, the majority of black voters are gonna vote Democrat. Now, it might not be as much as it did in 2020, but there's still going to be a lion's share of black voters to show up and vote for the Democrats. That's why. Yeah, like again, you know, I, there's an old saying, and I was talking to a friend of mine about it the other day, um, and it's an old saying, and I don't want to offend any of the ladies or anything, but it's a saying that that, that goes way back, especially among men. Um, how do you know who your daddy is? Because your mama told you. And that is how black people are with the Democratic Party. We don't know why we vote Democrat and why the Republicans are bad and all this other stuff, but we don't know any better. Like I said, my mother told me this is my daddy. That's what I'm going to go with. And that's who you think until you find out different. Right. And a lot of us are waking up and finding out different. So, uh, yeah, again, but uh, when I heard that analogy, I said, yeah, that does make kind of it makes sense in the logical of it. But again, how do you know who your daddy is? Because your mother told you so. And you have to go with that. Now we have DNA, but again, so. Yeah, easy. Say, D, if a citizen in LA is shooting at you, <coughs> excuse me, because they, and, and I'm getting over being sick, so that's why I'm coughing. I'm not being rude. I'm not meaning to anyway. Says, D, if a citizen uh, in LA is shooting at you because they think you're still in, uh, uh, you have the right to return the same deadly force and defense. Uh, California is a, uh, uh, they do have the castle doctrine. Uh, it's not as um, severe or austere as some states, but they do have some form um, of the castle doctrine. 
Um, but most of the law dictates that you have to return force for force, right? If I say your mama, you can't blow my head off, you know what I mean? Or whatever. So you're supposed to meet kind of force for force, if that makes any sense. Now, of course, if you feel if your life is in danger and yeah, you can do what you got to do and evoke self-defense. But of course that has to be proven in a court of law. Yeah. E easy that the laws when it comes to firearms in California is so jacked up, you will deal with litigation. If you go to a concealed carry course, which, which is what I, I went to, more than half the course had to deal with litigation. Basically, I'm going to give you a, a quick scenario. Somebody could come into your house, right? And they're stealing the TVs off the wall. You cannot use, you, you, you can't use deadly force to stop them to do that. Because if you shoot them, you weren't in danger. That's the law in California. You weren't in danger, so you might as well let them walk out with it and do whatever. So having a gun in your house is almost useless. So in California, you know, if you know what to do, a, a deleted person can't speak against you, but you're going to be in court for a very, very long time. Yes. Bernie, as you said, um, <clears throat> I didn't realize Karen Bass is a former representative, now the mayor. Uh, there's been a few of them shifting from mayor, uh, Congress to mayor, Sheila Jackson, Lee Los Houston. Why are they running for mayor? Because mayors are a president of the city. The mayors have more power, right? In Congress, she has to share power, right? A, a Congress person, representative, they have to share power. But as the mayor, they are the end all be all. They control the police. They control, you know, the city, right? They, they are the president of the city. And keep it a buck. There's more opportunities for little white envelopes to come toward you as the mayor because you make you make the city move. That's why. Right. And you also got to remember though, those those people that are transitioning to mayor, how long have they been in Congress for 30 years? Have you guys noticed that the Democratic Party dealing with an elderly president in office, they're having an age problem with all this leadership? Nancy Pelosi stepped down. Jim Clyburn has stepped down, so on, so on, so forth. They are starting to switch out the old guard because they're having an age problem. So when you've been in, if you got notoriety like that for so so long, you don't want to give it up. Sheila Jackson Lee is almost 80 years old. Jim Clyburn is 83. Why is it that she feels that she has to go and become a mayor? What, what more can she bring? She didn't bring nothing when she was a, a congressman. They're addicted to power. That's the problem. So, <clears throat> absolutely, Michael says Demetri and Donovan. Did the black population in California decline in 1992? Was it a new trend, or did the pre-existing conditions uh, exacerbate the trend? Um, I think probably every year the black population in California um, declined. I don't know what the population was then, but I would imagine it was more than uh, less than six percent, which is what it is now. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with uh, economics. It's very expensive anybody to live in California, let alone Los Angeles, those houses in South Central that used to be worth, you know, a hundred thousand, maybe on the high end are into the millions of dollars now. So it, it's definitely uh, uh, economics as to why the black population, in fact, the uh, most black, black population is now in the South. Go figure, right? That's where it was during slavery. And now it's that way uh, in 2024. So absolutely. And Miss Sweet Talk just says, a government profits off of our dysfunction. It's a shame. Yeah. And they keep us in a continual state of dysfunction, right? By everything we see on TV, the radio, uh, the people they send forward to disseminate uh, propaganda. We're kept that way on purpose because the last thing that they need, them folks, is for Black people to be in our right mind. If we, uh, as Black people as a collective, get in our right mind, it's over for everybody else economically and everything else you can think of. So it's th that that is being done to Black people on purpose. Real quick, uh, it's not breaking news, but it's something you guys need to know. The Joe Biden has floated the idea of um, housing Haitians in Guantanamo Bay, Bay Naval Air Station in Cuba. Are you for real? Yes. You yes. lying. I'm not lying. He wants to house them in Cuba if they seek an asylum. Why? Everybody else is coming to the United States. Why are you turning back the black folks? So something you guys need, need to know. Who in the world wants to live up in Guantanamo Bay? Ain't that where they was waterboarding people and stuff? 
That's where we're why, well, then, why don't he put the Asians in Guantanamo? I mean, not the Asians, the, the immigrants. Why don't he put the immigrants in Guantanamo? Well, Guantanamo well, well, here's the thing. You cannot house another group of people in another country. That is Cuba. So you can't bring people in there to house and it's on a military installation. But that's the idea when it comes to black people. They want to you can't come to Florida. We don't want to come to the United States. This is what the government thinks of black people. Seriously, this is what they think of us. Absolutely. Corliss, I see you back. I was like, oh, she dropped off. <laughs> you know them calls I be getting, girl. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so let me see. Let me get some of these comments. JJ, it says, as long as black folks are more concerned like Beyonce, uh, Kanye, hip hop, and ignore the massive is issues, this is what we get. Absolutely. Uh, let me skip down so I can catch up, y'all. Dr. David, how are you doing? He says, lived in uh, downtown Los Angeles for four years. Los Angeles is not for us. Yeah, I was just there a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, damn, where the black folks at? I I hardly see no black people. They out there. They homeless. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I was leaving the airport. <clears throat> I kid you not. It was raining, pouring down rain. And under the underpass, there was a homeless uh, brother, had his, his sock, his feet, uh, shoes off. And he's under, you know, a blanket under the underpass. He's just rubbing his feet together. And I'm like, wow, he's really comfortable there. <laughs> you know, not that it was funny, but it's like, wow. You know, just to see that. And with the homeless population, you see them and then you see them around nice houses. Of course, you know, the people with money out there in Los Angeles and businesses, they're, why do we got to put up with this? Something needs to be done about it. Oh, we shouldn't have to be paying for all this. But it's like, well, talk to your, your mayor and, and all of them. You know, they they, they could do something with the home. And I know they're trying to or whatever, but are they trying as hard as they are with the, with the immigrants? I'm about to say that because, honey, they ain't trying at all. Because if they were, they wouldn't be bringing all these immigrants over here, giving them all this free money that the United States don't. I ain't going to say don't have. Ain't got. Y'all ain't got it. Cali especially California. It's in a deficit. So I am on a com like we're it's a group, a nonprofit group that was created. Right. And we go to meet with the Congress people up in Senate <clears throat> next month on the 29th to talk about a bill that we created. Right. Um, I'm just trying to understand why they are saying, oh, well, if your bill asks for any money at all, we're going to knock it down automatically. Right. Because they don't have no money. So my question is to you, if you don't have no money for the people that live here, that pay taxes here in California, uh, I'm a little confused as to how you're helping other people that ain't here, no papers, no nothing. And then you have the audacity to say, can you open your doors and let them come live with you? Hell no. Open well, some doors at the White House. Right. I have a question for you, Corliss. Now, didn't Gavin Newsom recently say that they want to give free health care to migrants and illegal people so they can have, they can do that? So if you got money for things like universal health care for them and you run this place into a deficit, it's like, where's the where, where's the middle ground here? Because either you're going to have to raise taxes. Or, you know, what are we doing here? You don't have any money for reparations. You don't have any money for anything else. But you have money for people that aren't supposed to be here uh, to begin with. Absolutely. And have you heard about the exit tax? So now when you leave out the state of California, they want to tax you. Who the hell you think I'll be telling you, oh, I'm moving to a whole nother state so I can give you some more money? Like, if you don't knock it off, well, well, you don't know how to govern what you got. Yeah, well, ha have you seen all the, the the license plates of cars from Utah and Arizona and stuff like that? Now, for lo those of you guys that don't know, in most states, when you move to that state, unless you're military, you have to register your car within 30 days or something like that. It's usually around, around 30 days and you pay the taxes in that state, whatever. But most people here in California, there, there are so many cars running around with different tags and tags that aren't even. I saw a guy with, a, uh, I think it was a red tag or something. He was like two years delinquent, but people don't have any money here in California, so he can't pay his registration. And you just see people just running around. They would just rather just take a, a ticket because they don't have money to, to pay the registration for their cars. That's how bad it's gotten in California. That's how bad democratic policies does. Remember, this used to be known as the golden state. This is now known as the state. 
And not only that, I think California has some of the highest car registration uh, to pr uh, t prices in the in this nation. I, even if you have an older car, you're looking at $300 for registration because they uh, put that gas tax on as well. Uh, and the way they wrote the legislation, a lot of people voted on it thinking they were saying no to the 12 percent. I think it was 12 cents on the gallon, uh, but they were actually voting yes. So in addition to all of that, it's, you know, that you got the 12 percent gas uh, on the uh, 12 cents per gallon more. It's, it's just a lot. Yeah. But California, it, I, I can understand why somebody's tags would be delinquent, you know, because I ain't got it. You know, my, my, mom, work. my mom's tags and she has, I want to say, a two. I don't even think it's a 2000, y'all. I think it's like the end of 1990 something. And her tax is 160. That is absolute. And you need a smog for what, girl? Smog every other year, exactly. Yes. I, have a, I have a 2003. My tags in October last year was $260. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think here in Texas, this is the last year that they're going to be asking people to do uh, vehicle inspections. So you just have to pay uh, for the registration. I think it's like $75, no matter, I think, what car you drive. Uh, so that's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> but I know California, after a while, when your car is so old, you're not supposed to have to do it anymore, you know, or something like that. But yeah, it, it, everything is high. Uh, you know, and being here in Houston, everything is high here as well. Uh, you know, going to the store is like, damn, it seems like everything keeps going up every time I go. It's like, really? <laughs> it wasn't that way last week. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, paper tags. I don't, that must be a thing in Houston. Like, everybody got paper tags. What's that about? I don't know. Because <laughs> you cause you can go buy it and don't have to update it because that's a homie hookup. So they don't have to go in. It's a temporary fix. Yeah, in California, you only can have paper tags for so long before they like, nah, you you gonna have to come up off of it or figure out where your license plate is. Marcos, how you doing? Says if you're poor, please leave California. Michael, I saw you also saying, um, will we prefer 100% of black people leave California? No, percent. I prefer 100% of black people be in California. California. I don't care what we say. You can say whatever you want about California, but California. Uh, sands the prices and all that is the place to be especially southern california you you know where i was uh 50 minutes from los angeles uh an hour from the mountains three hours from vegas uh an hour to the you know palm springs and you know an hour maybe 45 minutes to disneyland so uh, you know it california the, the weather you ain't gonna beat the weather there you know but it, it's it's hard to live there i do what 50 minutes from the beaches, you know, a couple of beaches is just right there. So I would prefer everybody could live in California, you know, without the earthquakes, but it's a beautiful place to be, you know, palm trees. I miss the palm trees being in Houston. I miss palm trees. If I see a palm tree, I'm like, wow, that ah, reminds me of home <laughs> and mountains. There's no mountains here. None. So I prefer we all be in California. I'm a California girl. Uh, that guy, McFly, says California will be in the ocean soon. Anyway, they've been saying that since I was a child. Oh, it's falling in the ocean. I mean, it very well might be. We, at least we know some of them very wealthy people houses is about to fall into the ocean. They build them right there on the cliff. It's like, what was you thinking? You, you didn't think eventually Mother Nature would say, hold my beer? <laughs> um, yeah, Quincy, that's my old test, boy. Uh, that you be like, Especially if you're driving a you know a car that ain't so new, it's like, damn, is it gonna pass? Because then if it don't, then you got to get hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands, to get it fixed. And, and wait, do you guys want to know what what's crazy about California? I'm sure how desperate people are in California. They're cutting off catalytic converters on people's cars, so you might go to work and park your car, come back, there's no catalytic converter. A basic catalytic converter could run you between six hundred dollars up to fifteen to two thousand dollars depending on what kind of car it is. That's how desperate people are here in California. I got a stalker. Robert, how many emails have you made so far? You Just say you love me. Say you love me and I'll let you stay. Michael, I didn't bring anybody else up yet. My, uh, 
Robert, just say you love me. And, and just say you love me. And then you, I think once you free yourself, then you'll feel better instead of coming up here stalking me. You remind me of the little boy, you know, in uh, grade school when he messed with the little girl, he pulled her pigtails. It was only because he liked her. She would have gave him a kiss on the cheek. He would have been her best friend. Just say you love me. It's okay. But in the meantime, I'm going to block you. So, 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 in, so, in regards to L L Latasha Harlan's, um, why is it that they can give us a hair month and all this other stuff, but our black servants do not recognize pivotal things within our community in regards to Latasha Harlan's today? Again, today's her birthday, whatever, and it is silence across the the African di uh, American African diaspora. Uh, in regards to her situation and what actually happened. Well, it's not her birthday. Her birthday is actually January 1st, but uh, March 16th is the day that soon uh, took her life. Um, they don't care. Because there's the people, CBC, Congressional Black Caucus, they're only doing things that's giving them a bang for their buck now, right? Standing up there with giving the, the, you know, the Asian hate crime bill, that gives them a bang for their buck, right? Helping the immigrants come over here. That gives them a bang for their buck. Helping black people don't. Again, they know they got a loyal group of voters no matter what they do to us. We're always going to be there. We're going to fight each other online now. Talk about, oh, you sell out. No, you sell out. You don't vote for the Democrats. You sell out. I you want to vote for Donald Trump. You sell out. So they know we got black people that's going to do the jobs. And they don't have to do anything. Congressional Black Caucus, people think, Oh, they're there for black people. Well, if you just take a moment and go read their uh, mission statement, they say, uh, they're paraphrasing, helping black people and other marginalized groups of people. No other congressional caucus, whether it's the Asians, it's whatever it is, uh, Hispanic, theirs don't say uh, other marginalized people. They say their people specifically, but the black caucus, nah, they out there helping everybody but black people. Yes, Dr. David, the oh my God, the, the California weather, that's what I miss about it. It got cold sometimes, it didn't stay cold too long, but you know, you put you a jacket on, if you're going working out early in the morning, which is what I would do, i go up Mount Rubido um, every day, i put on a you know a nice hoodie, you know, some leggings and some gloves, and i hit the road. Um, and you know, one thing about it, 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 it's not always gloomy in California. It has gloomy days, but for the most part, it's sunny, even though um, it's cold. I'd say for the most part. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna be California there. has a 93% uh, sunny rate every year. 93% of the time, the weather is sunny. Yeah, you're not going to beat the weather. I don't care. And that's what people pay for. When they move to California, they pay for the weather. And the food. Yep. Because we're going to eat good in California. Well, and the, the best thing about Southern California, I always tell people that is you have the, the the actual mix mixture of the different cultures, little Korea, you know, all the different things. So if you want a certain meal or something, Thailand, you got everything is here. Whereas if, like if I go to the South, you don't see that as much prevalent. Yeah, you might see a Spanish shop or something or a Tijano uh, something. But in general, L.A., I mean, African, Jamaican, I mean, anything you want is there. It's like going to New York. Everybody's got their little niche. So, but the, but the question is this, you have Chinatown, you have Koreatown, you have little Armenia, you have little Saigon. Where is Blackville? <laughs> Watts. <laughs> South Central. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Cali Beach. How you doing? He says, I'm fighting to stay here in California and I am born and raised. Yeah, a lot of people are fighting to stay there. It's a struggle. Unless you got a great job or you got roommates and y'all working a bunch of jobs. That's how a lot of people are surviving in California. Unless they bought their house back in the day before it got stupid, you know, as far as what it was um, worth or whatever. Unless you already established, yeah, you're going to have to go to California with a little Skrilla in your pocket, you know? Um, Donovan, so your house is fully paid, right? Fully paid, yes. Okay. What is it worth right now? Uh, my house is estimated, last I checked, was like $510,000. Okay. So down there on Bud Long, Schlossen, uh, just all, you know, all the major real hood hood areas, 
we were, my friend sent me a house, a, a house on Bud Long, a million dollars. Y'all got to be, I wish I would yes. ever. Yes, you were close to the beach. Yes, I mean, that's. We, we, you close they, to all the homeless. Yeah, well, the thing is when they were gentrifying that area and them Negroes were taking Big Mama's house as she passed for $325,000 and they were, you know, they were uh, public domaining it. They so undervalued those people's property. It, it, it was so sad. And now it's those areas is a million dollars. Now, in regards to my house, my house was built in 1980. My mom initially bought the house for $80,000. Hmm. Four bedroom, super huge backyard. You know, dimitra has been over here, whatever the deal is. And uh, yeah, uh, value wise, it, and it just keeps going up. Here in California, the property goes up like, I, I would say at least 1.3%, you know, the every, the every, every two months. The property going up like the crime rate. Yeah, ah. exactly. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Kendrick Lamar. Women, weed, and weather. <laughs> That's what they say about California anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and here, here's the thing with, with home ownership. And the problem is, especially in Atlanta and places that are kind of growing and kind of getting big cities, is the problem is, and I would never understand this. A lot of my friends got caught up in this. They buy a house. They qualify for that little house, right? Big Mama raised you in that house for 40 years. It took Big Mama and, and, and Big Papa to get that house. 40 years, they raised their kids and everything like that. We got caught up in the prosperity stuff. And I see all my friends that had a nice house. Then they would take the equity out of the house, go buy another house, a bigger house, and then a bigger house. Now they can't get rid of the bigger house because they're trying to downsize. Nobody wants to take on that debt and they're taking a loss. What we got to do is stop selling the property. Whatever property you got, do not sell it. There's got to be somebody in your family that could either you could rent to or you can sell to. But we got to start keeping our property. In my little cul-de-sac right here, the Mexican family came in, the, the mom and the dad bought theirs. Then when the other house became available, they bought it for the son, so on, so on, so forth. And, and these people are now all landlords. We, we as black people, we, we don't do that. We just buy the property, then we get bigger. Remember, Demetra, back in the day, how many of you guys remember this story? You're sitting in church. Here comes that strong single mom. God bless her. Oh, the Lord has blessed me with this house. The Lord is so good to me. I went and got this and I qualified. And it's a five bedroom, 2,400 square feet. Then 2008 happened. Oh, Lord, how the devil put me on this house? How can I get out of here? Oh, my Lord. Lord. Oh, Lord, how could you do this to me? Oh, I got. How many of you guys remember that? How many of you guys remember that? Wait, they still doing that today, Donovan. That ain't yeah. back right now. Exactly. Exactly. We, and ladies, I'm not like, you know, I know I made a joke about that. We're not saying, you know, whatever. But we, if you guys are going to buy a house, because a lot of us got uh, predator uh, lending and stuff like that happened to us. Get somebody to understand what you're signing into. Because a lot of you women are getting caught up in balloon payments. There's a report out that says black women are the uh, women in general are the uh, biggest homeowners in our community, right? Women have more homes, whatever. Okay, that's true. But at the same time, they're losing the homes because of the balloon payments. They're the, they're the, the biggest ones getting evicted. So we got to be smarter in how we approach our finances and things of that nature. Ladies, I'm not a financial guru. I do all right. But things that I don't know about, I go to people that I know to tell me, you know, where I actually do stand. Okay. We, we got to stop listening to the YouTube university uh, struggle folks and go to the experts. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That predatory lending. I uh, got a lot of people caught up 2008 in the uh, housing market crash. They did a lot of stated loans. How much you say you making? I, I'm, I'm making 50, 60,000 a year. At Taco Bell? Yeah. Do a lot of overtime. And they just let you write it down instead of saying, okay, bring the paperwork to back it up. That's why I call it a state of loan. Of course, you know, they call that the house of cards uh, because it came crashing down because a lot of times, like you said, Donovan, a lot of those people got balloon payments, which means in a couple of years, 15 years, usually you need to either have paid that, that portion of the house off or you need to come do, you know, when that 15 years is up, 
or however long it was. And a lot of people was like, I ain't got that kind of money. Never mind, you know, the interest that was tacked on to it. Um, because a lot of times with those balloon payments, uh, you got the house for you know, the mortgage was doable, but then when that balloon payment came to uh do, it was like, Yeah, I'm still working at Taco Bell and I ain't got a promotion yet, <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people lost the houses, but the lenders they call it predatory lending because the, the lenders knew a lot of those people couldn't qualify for that house, but the banks were taking stated loans at the time, so they're like, Well, write it up, oh, they got approved, cool, and the lender. Uh, the real estate agents, they were getting all that commission. They were, I mean, the realtors and the lenders, they were living like fat rats. Yeah, remember, remember Countrywide? Uh, yeah, they're no longer in existence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they were the one of the main perpetrators of the yes. predatory lenders. Predator, yeah. And nobody went to jail from that. Nobody went to jail. But a lot of people lost their houses, you know, behind that predatory lending. Uh, it, it was a mess. So uh, that too, of course, we know. Uh, help dilapidate a lot of black wealth we know real estate is where the wealth is and a lot of black real estate went belly up as well during that housing um uh, market crash so just in case you were wondering uh, i don't know how we got to talking about that but incredible brother how you doing it says latest movie out american society of magical negroes highlights most negroes behavior toward whites in their day to day activities always make sure they're comfortable and happy. Yeah, I heard a lot about that movie. I heard it from um, the opposite end of things, like it was ridiculous. I'm one of those people, I like to watch movies for myself, whether they're good or bad, because if I'm, and I want to talk about it because I heard a lot about it, uh, but I want to see exactly what it is, because unfortunately, a lot of times people go on Twitter and take the advice of somebody who didn't see the movie, and they write up a whole thing, all oh, this movie is about, did you see the movie? I'm not going to go see that movie. Well, how are you telling people, how are you critiquing something you ain't seen? Well, I'm just saying, because I heard from somebody else that the movie wasn't. So you tell you up here influencing other fools like you to not go make a judgment for themselves. How do people see so much power to you? How they can see so much power to you? How is it that you got all that power and you ain't even got no knowledge of what you're talking about? You ain't even seen the movie. But you got a whole synopsis drawn out on Twitter. Damn, that sound like Black America. Well, Demetra, uh, you did at, uh, at, uh, recommend me to watch the movie Bassinet. <laughs> Tubi. Bassinet. <laughs> <Yes, laughs> <that> movie. <laughs> oh, that movie. Was I was so traumatized. I mean, <laughs> Lord have mercy. That movie was so stupid. I think that was the last thing I watched on Tubi. I said, I'm good. I'm done with Tubi. That's the title. How Perry, many like, black movies do we have to see where the woman is a hoe, there's a bank robbery, we live in the hood. Why can't we make movies where we're like normal people, some of us that are, you know, uh, higher education people, where we're always struggling. Have you guys noticed that in the movies? Every movie independently that's done, we are struggling. We're always struggling and gunplay and uh, illicit sex and our women are, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I just, I notice it. We we all notice it. And guess what? I don't watch it. Because if I want to go see some hoes, I could just watch the drone on YouTube on Figaro. You crazy. I ain't got to go pay nobody. <laughs> I ain't, and I damn sure ain't going to sit up in my house and just be like, oh, we going to watch foolery for real? I was going to say something else, like he could just log on to Instagram, but that's probably a step too far. Um, so there's two things. And David, I'm going to get to your comment. He says, if every black person gets some whole life insurance, they will stop killing us too. The insurance companies will get tired of paying out those policies and they will take their asses to Congress and lobby Congress. Hey, y'all need to do police reform because we are paying out too much money or, you know, black people need a hate crime bill or whatever to deter people from taking their lives. Because we're paying out too much money, right? Uh, especially to during 9-11. George Bush said five words, I think it was. Y'all know what those five words were? A couple words, actually. There's been an act of terrorism committed upon America. You know what happened? Life insurance company said, oh, we ain't got to pay those claims out. You know why? Because in a lot of people's life insurance, it says, uh, like if it was a, a extreme act of mother nature or an act of terrorism, we don't have to pay. 
He knew that. He's in bed with the life insurance companies and the banks. So he threw them a Hail Mary. And a lot of those people whose lives were taken in 9-11 uh, had life insurance policies that did not pay. With those words, life insurance companies like. So you're absolutely right. And the other thing, too, is about why don't they make movies uh, or why do they always make movies like that? Let's keep it a buck. That's on us. Birth of a Nation, Renee Parker, tanked. Not tanked for a couple of reasons. A lot of sisters went out there talking about, oh, I remember back in the day, he was he was uh, accused of raping a white girl, which he was found not guilty. But that happened almost 20 years after, uh, or before Birth of a Nation came out. But they helped <coughs> white supremacy take the movie. But of course, the movie was about Nat Turner and you know the, the revolution he did on them folks. So they didn't want us to see that. Another thing, too, is if and when they make a movie about Marcus Garvey, Negroes ain't going to pack the theaters out to see that. But if they tell you Tyler Perry is making a movie, Steve Harvey making a movie, you know, about some booty shaking or, you know, the song, a Girls Trip 3, and, and black people are going to be in the movies. You ain't going to be able to get in there, right? But that, a lot of people are like, well, we would love to make a movie about Harriet Tubman, Marcus Garvey, somebody like that. However, our target audience is not going to go see it. It'll be three people in that movie theater. Well, um, what is it? Shirley Chisholm, she'll be on Netflix on the 22nd. So everybody go over there and watch it on Netflix because our people are very deserving to be acknowledged and learned about. We have so much history that they don't want anyone to know about and for the life of me i don't even understand why we don't even educate ourselves i don't understand that we want to take everything these people say at face value and just run with it oh well they said um they said this or they said that and then we run with it but we don't go do no research see one thing i did with my kids i taught them about our history so when they went to school and said oh the black person made a broom or the black person made this and the teacher said oh no no they didn't do that because my kids came home guess what i marched my big ass right on up there and shoulder yes the hell we did because what the hell y'all was doing with brooms nothing except <laughs> bringing them over our back yeah, well, you got you got to think about uh, the American school system in, now. In general, think about this. This is what they think about black people. We were slaves. There was a man named Lincoln that freed the slaves. Then there was Martin Luther King. Then there was Obama. Black history in less than ten seconds, right there. And as long as you think you've never done anything, you will never do anything. And that's how they keep throwing up in our mind. Because think about it. Sometimes I'll see what's going on, like in some of these cities and whatever. And, you know, like here in California, Corliss, you know this, that when the Mexicans have a problem, they walk out of the schools. They will just bring their kids and they just, just you know, you know, basically take in our playbook, what we used to do and walk, walk them out of the schools. Us, we just sit there and I don't want my baby to get hurt now. You just, die. Uh -uh, you don't get involved in that girl. Yeah, we don't want you to get hurt. That's that's them them people problem, whatever the deal is. And, and, and we've gotten so far away from what everybody else is using that, that we invented, the civil unrest and all that other stuff like that. Because you guys gotta remember, to be free, somebody has to die. Because freedom isn't free. And we are so bent on our children not getting hurt. Like right now, people say, well, Donovan, what if it was your child that had to go out there? Then he's got to go out there. That's how I feel about it. Because, I, you know, again, I have a different experience than you guys do. Because where I'm from, it's about service before self. So if I had to sacrifice my son, just like I think Isaac in the Bible had to be sacrificed or whatever the deal was, uh, I'm willing to do that. But we have a thing where we don't want our kids to be hurt no matter what. So we would rather kowtow down to the powers that be rather than fight and struggle. But I will say this, we are the only people in the African diaspora that fights racism every day. So we can pat ourselves on the back about that. We're the only group that, that does it. Well, Donovan, I was the one 
that the, the parents, I didn't play that foolishness. And I didn't play with my kids when it came to education and the system and none of them. So when they saw me, they was like, oh, shit, here she come again. You damn right. You know why? Because every time they need me, I'm going to show up. And if I see somebody else's kids up there that wasn't getting treated right, guess what? I'm going to say something. Because I don't know where they mom at, but I'm standing right here right now. So at the end of the day, I need to open up my mouth. Because guess what? I would want somebody else to do it for my kid, too. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this that's going on here in America, I, I mean, maybe not even a lot, but a good amount of it, we can control that. That's in our control. You know, we're always giving power to somebody else. What's more powerful than the black dollar? We give all of that money away. 97% of what, $1.7 trillion right now will make up like the ninth, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th largest uh, country uh, in the world, if Black Americans were a country economically, well, we don't keep that money. Now, I know we got to have businesses, but wouldn't it be nice if we got together, started one business, started another business, started another business? We won't do that. You know, it's hard for us to get along. We talk about this all the time. There's a book, and I'm going to keep telling y'all about it, The Hidden Secrets to Oriental Wealth. It's on YouTube. Uh, audio book, I've read it, and I've listened to it a bunch of times. And the author was actually talking to black people. He says, you guys think that Asians get special stuff and we know that they do to some degree, right? But he said, the formula is easy. He said, we got the same enemy y'all got, but we know how to minimize the effect that they have on us. We don't need them for nothing. We, we pull our money together. He says, it'll be 13 of us in the house. We don't always like each other or get along, but the model is shut your mouth. Go to that donut shop or the cleaners. Yeah, it's not a glamorous job right now, but you're going to go do the work. You're going to come home, pull the money together. We're going to count it up and say, okay, oh, you got a business you want to start? Go get the money. They ain't going to no bank either. They going up under something or whatever. And they say, how much is it to start it? A hundred thousand. Okay. Here's, you know, some racks right here. We got to go start the business. Get it. We all going to help you get it up and running. We're going to get all the Negroes money because that's going to be the customer base, right? And then when that business is in the black, all right, that business pays back the bank. And then we say, okay, who's up next? Oh, you want to start a business? Bet how much? A hundred thousand. Here you go. And they wash, rinse, repeat. Us, I say, hey. I want to get together with 10 people I know. Hey, especially in California, we're struggling, but there's this big giant house that'll accommodate us. Will we have a, the comfortability that we would in our own house? No, not right now. But if we could just endure it for a year, maybe two, save all the money, then we could buy another house, you know, and, and, and build. Nah, I ain't going to do that because see what it is, is I need my own. I can't just be living with everybody. You know what I'm saying? But that has been ingrained in us to not get along. And that has been ingrained in us since the plantation, which is why you have the division of the house, the field, and the yard. You know what I mean? They made that division. The yard, the, the field, you know, in word per se, he was really worthless. The one in the yard, well, he was worthless, but he was a little bit better than the one in the field. And of course, you know, the one in the house, he was, she was all that because they was probably master's children. So they was light and curly hair and all that. They, none of them were like by white supremacy, but they taught us that division. And to this day, we do that to each other. Where you look, how light your skin is, what kind of hair you got, you know, and, and all that other stuff. And we walking around here with the clothes of white supremacy on our back, paying, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a purse. And upwards of eleven hundred dollars for shoes we can't even walk in. That ain't even in our name. You know what I mean? Just so we can be seen. And Michael, you said why is it that black people are concerned more about? I think you said public perception, and no other group is because to black people we have been taught, especially in America, for so long you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. So you get something, whether it's a Gucci purse, who the the brand is racist, don't like black people. 
you get to walk around with that Gucci purse and people say, people who are dead, right? Mentally. Oh, look at that. They must be somebody. You know, they got a label on. And to them, that means something. Yes, see me. I'm somebody. But a person like me is like, well, how much money you got in the purse? Girl, that food stamp card that's in the purse. If you don't knock it off, you better talk you about any people with Gucci, Prada, Fendi, all that. Sliding uh food stamp cards and everything else, just like the Chinese folks that come out here, got all these businesses and up in the food stamp, getting food stamps and all that. And y'all better stop thinking that we the majority over there on food stamps because we ain't. But, we the minority for real. But, 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 but Corliss, you know, most of those folks wearing the Fendi and stuff out here in L.A. is on Santee Avenue getting their clothes from down there to knock off. They're getting their stuff off the knock off nah, at the fashion district. But you know what? The crazy part is a lot of them aren't. What's going on right now? It's income tax season. See, the smart thing would be a lot of people, I ain't getting no, I ain't got a big tax return in a minute, right? Um, but a lot of people going to get a big tax return. Instead of saying, hey, girl, hey, homeboy, I know you getting a couple of racks. Let's put some of that together and start a little business. Let's go buy some property. Nah, we're going to go get the real Gucci. We're going to get a car we ain't going to keep and have three months from now. You know, and buying the kids a new phone and they three years old. We're still trying to catch up from Christmas. <laughs> right. You know, or instead of paying off the debt for Christmas, you're going to go buy a whole bunch of stuff you don't need. And that's going to depreciate in value. Other groups, they getting that money. You know, it even corners to your point with the food stamps. A lot of those groups, they get the food stamps. They ain't going to stuff in their refrigerator. They buying them something and they going to get some beans and rice and tortillas and some meat and they rolling up some burritos and they on the corner on the corner. Or they send the Paco to work with burritos and he's selling it to the, the, the crew at the warehouse, you know, but us, we buying Zuzus and not all of us, but y'all know where I'm going. Zuzus and wham wham stuff that's un, not nutritional. But they like, we're going to take half of us, half to sell, and then we're going to make the money back. And then when we get a re-up on our food stamps, we're going to wash, rinse, repeat. You want to know what's crazy? I just want to say this, this real quick. And I'm not advocating the military or anything like that, but I am a military man. I just went to a, a chief ceremony with my sister-in-law. She, she made E9, whatever, great, great for her, whatever. A long time coming. I met her, she was uh, E4. So when I first met her, so she, she finally made it to the top. But what I noticed at the base and Demetra, you know, you're a long base person over there. Remember, you used to go to the base and you see a bunch of white people and a bunch of black people. And you saw some Asians, maybe one or two, maybe a couple of Hispanics, whatever. So I'm over there and I'm talking to this young uh, black airman. And he's like, yeah, the things that he wants to do, whatever. And I said, why did you join the military? He goes, oh, well, I wanted to kind of, you know, do this and get some benefits. And this is that. And I said, OK, well, that, well, that's pretty, pretty, pretty smart. But he was saying that, long story short, he said that he wanted to get a house now. And I said, why did you want to get a house now? He goes, well, at, he was only about 20 years old. He said, I'm only 20 years old. He goes, well, he goes, what I want to do as a guardsman, one week in a month, two weeks a year, maybe more, depending what your job is, whatever. But anyway, because he is in the reserves or the guard, whatever he was in, he qualifies for a house in California. It's backed by the government. At 20 years old, he can have a house, a starter house, anywhere in the United States. It's backed by the government. And he said, I said, well, are you a military person? He goes, oh, hell no. He goes, this is just a, a means to justify an end. And what I've noticed at this base now, you see a bunch of Hispanics and Asians there. And you talk to almost just about every one of them. They're not career. They're just like, I'm in here to do my time, get my benefits, and I'm out of here. And that's what they're doing. And but you but you look at our young black folks. I can't join no military. My uncle Rufus said, you know, it was a bunch of bullshit when he was in, and da da da. And Otis and I said, well, what happened to Uncle Rufus? Oh, well, they caught him smoking weed. Come on, lay off the weed for four years and get you some damn benefits. And that's what they're doing in general. So if you're a young person out there and you're seeing this other young person that came from the same neighborhood you came from. And they can qualify for a house. And you know that that they're in the guard or the reserves or whatever they're doing. That's how they got it. Because you know they mom ain't got no money. That's how they got it. A lot of them are starting businesses because of the military. I'm not, I'm not pushing the military. What I'm saying is, damn, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I joined the military when I was 17. 
my plan was to get out by the time I was 21, but shit started happening, whatever. So I ended up staying. But the point is you could knock those four years out, get you some benefits and be done with it. Uh, Demetra has a, a, a nephew that was in the Marine Corps. He's getting 100% disability. He's making two, you know, $200,000 and his regular job, 100% disability. That's $4,000 a month. This is how they're doing it. They're playing, they're playing the game. Us, oh, nah, man, I'd rather just see, nah, man, you know, Uncle Rufus told me the military ain't shit, you know, and it ain't for everybody. It ain't for everybody. I get it. But to some people, it's a means to an end. It really is. Look, let me tell y'all something as one that received food stamps for many, many, many years, okay? Everybody be trying to downplay food stamps and people that's on food stamps, but go put, go see somebody that put a post up there and say, oh, I'm selling food stamps. Everybody, you want, every one of y'all that's talking. Baby, oh, you gonna be in the inbox talking about, girl, what you got? Let me um sell you this money. You got cash app? You got Venmo? Oh, okay, quit playing. But anywho. But wait, hold on, Corliss. I, and I'm going to be in that inbox too. But this is the other thing. I, I'm going to be in there talking about how much. Now, this is the other thing. Because listen, I ain't going to lie to King it. I done bought some food stamps. But back in the day, it was 50 cents on the dollar. These heifers nowadays talk about 75 cents on the dollars. Like, I wish I would. But it's, it's plenty of them. It, it's plenty of them. Look, my phone would be ringing all the time, baby. I'll be hooking up people behind the scenes. Like, that's what you do because truly what they give you, whatever it is that they do. And a lot of these people are in school. They have kids. Yes. They get so much food, especially when the pandemic was, you couldn't do nothing with all them damn food stamps. They was giving you, you ain't have enough refrigerator to harbor all the food that you could buy. Like for real, like let's be real. Be we're, we're going to be serious. I, I was real grateful for the pandemic. Food stamps. I was absolutely. Everybody that was getting them told my auntie, you need something? Sure. What you got? I need a lot of stuff. But because I'm good to people, people look out for me. But back to this wealth and um <clears throat> and land and stuff. Donovan and Demetra. The people that owned the beachfront down in LA County. I don't remember. I can't I can't remember the beach. But Bruce look at him. What is it? Bruce Beach. Okay. Bruce so, Beach, but it's, um, I, I, it'll come to me. Uh, go ahead. So with that, right? They fought for years to get that land back. LA County did not want to unass it, but they got the right attorneys in there. They got the land back. It wasn't even a whole year. And they gave that land back. Man, oh, man. We, we we can't and we ain't y'all wasn't that y'all couldn't have been smart enough to find some people that can show you how to work and manage that land because do you know how much money I'm talking about generation they whole family could have went been the landlords, to be the landlord the wealth movement to be the landlord and notice that his wife and I'm not saying anything I wife, am his wife was white. Well, he should have dumped her ass somewhere. He should have dumped her in the beach waters. Because I don't understand what kind of foolery would make you give back your ancestors' generational wealth. I'd have dumped her ass and found a sister so quick to have some damn common sense and say, hey, look, stupid. Not, oh, Jimmy Bob. Oh, honey, we're going to just go ahead and, no. Nah. I wish I would ever. I got land in Arkansas. Well, right? well, well, let me ask you this, Corliss. They, they sold it back for $20 million. And how long is $20 million in California going to last you? That's nothing. L look here. They couldn't have gave me 25 nothing. You're not getting it back. Because guess what? All the all the people that built on that land, around that land, all that. Oh, no, y'all would have been paying me. So you were going to get way more than $25 million in a year, stupid. They, I, I don't understand how we don't think that far. We're uh, right now. Come on, y'all. You got you to do it. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought about that because I, I heard the, you know, I actually covered that story. It's Manhattan Beach is what it was. Um, and that story, Willa and uh, oh, I forget the, the man's name, but Mr. and Mrs. Bruce was their name. 
back in the ninth, early 1900s, they owned that land. California did an eminent domain on them, uh, took the land from them. And Manhattan Beach is a prime piece of real estate where white folks are and probably other people now. Um, <clears throat> so over 100 years later, the family did get the beach back. And that was done by uh, Los Angeles City Council. Uh, of course, Governor uh, Gavin Newsom was involved in that. So they gave it back to him. They were approached with the offer of $20 million. So, of course, I heard the criticism. They should have kept the land, this, that, and the other. But then I, I, I thought about it. I was like, well, we don't know what their financial situation was. You know, maybe they were broke. I don't know. Just a couple things. And, you know, I'm sure maybe there was some taxes or something on it. So I'm sure it was more to it than, hey, we're just going to give away the family's legacy. And then maybe they thought, well, we didn't have it. But this is the other criticism that I have, right? Because I heard it was maybe something to do with the uh, the taxes or something on that. And I'm like, and then somebody says, well, what about all these celebrities? Why they didn't come through and help them or offer to buy it? I'm like, well, there's enough black people in, Cal in California or in the United States where we could have collectively said, hey, brother, you ain't got to sell that if we were privy to that, right? Because it just sounds like they made a backdoor deal and we found out they sold it. But we could have, were we ready? Were we as black people in position to say, keep it? We're going to do it uh, uh, every year. We're going to all donate, the, all the black people in, in America going to donate a dollar, five dollars to this fund in order for you to keep it, right? Did we Were we in position for our people to say, no, nah, I ain't got to sell it because my people good. We're going to make sure we got this a piece of our, you know, real estate. In fact, all you white people need to be getting the hell up out of Manhattan Beach, you know, whatever. Or if I was there, I would say, great, y'all give me the $20 million. However, I'm going to need to keep 30% of this beach, right? I need to have, I'm not going to give it all to you, right? So I would have liked to know exactly what that conversation was. But the other thing is, $20 million, if you ain't got it, it's kind of hard to say, I'm good. Yeah, but, but but here's the funny thing. They just locked down Daytona Beach. They just locked down Fort Lauderdale for spring break. If you had that beach right now, California, that, that I'd be killing it if I had that land right now as a black beach type area. Just just come over here and just walk around. That part right there. And I, I'm saying this too, D. <clears throat> they had that land for over 100 years, right? Baby, you had to have some wise counsel in there speaking on your behalf. Because it ain't no way I would have took over nothing giving y'all a damn dime with all that you owe me for a hundred years. So if 20 something million dollars worth a hundred years that you took from me plus what's to come in the future, absolutely not. And if you got the right person in there negotiating, guess what? They would have covered it. Absolutely. Flat out. No, you're, this is how you going to do. This is how we're going to do this. Um, Michael, I was not on food stamps. I said I did. Um, I got some. I got a hold of some through the homie hookup. Um, that, I, you know, if y'all get what I'm saying, but Wait no. A minute, honey, hold on, hold on. You ain't gotta say shit to him. Let me check your ass real quick, Negro. Okay, first of all, Michael Asian. <laughs> oh, but I'm gonna go there with his ass because you got the audacity. Baby, let me tell you something. See, I used to work at Walmart. And what you don't say, did you say you're too smart to depend on the government? Baby, you better know that today anybody and everybody should be qualifying for food stamps. I done seen some hoes walk up in Walmart with a whole chin carried on white women, boo, that depend on the government. So let's not go there about being too goddamn smart. You could be smart, dumb, and in between. A hoe, a housewife. Uh, a multi baby, everybody get food stamps. So please don't let that fool you. Slow your slow ass down. I see why the fuck you over there by yourself. Excuse my French, but that just really pissed me off. You too smart to depend on the government. Really? When the government out here giving free money to goddamn immigrants? So what are they? They too smart too? The fuck up out of here, man. And food stamps is made to be like a thing of shame. It's not a thing of shame. I would say it's humbling for anybody to say, hey, I need help. But it's not a thing of shame. But people have made that a thing of shame. And it's not. There's a lot of people. And Cordis, I totally agree with you, especially with all the money they give it away to everybody. Everybody in America should have a food stamp card and be able to go into the store 
and swipe a food stamp card and say, hey, well, you giving, you know, migrants in Chicago $9,000 so they can set up and they getting food stamp cards and stuff. Why can't I get one regardless of where I work or how much money I got? Because no matter what I got with inflation high, that's going to dilapidate my savings and the money I'm earning by going to the high ass grocery store and having to buy groceries. So I agree with you. Everybody should be getting a food stamp card. So how smart are you? I want to know how smart he is with that dumb ass comment that just came out of his mouth. And hey, wait, hold up, hold up too. Hold up. <coughs> Asians get food stamps. A whole Baby, lot of them get food stamps. Look here. Didn't you not hear me say when I used to go to the food stamp outlet over there on Cherry in North Long Beach? Baby, it was more Chinese and white people in there than black people. In a Benzes. With they nice rings on, getting a whole food stamp, all the food stamps, they coming out with a stack like this. See, that's when we had paper food stamps. Oh, they had that, and they was getting a check. And guess what they was doing? They was cashing our taxpayers' dollars and sending them back to your goddamn country. So don't come out here talking with that foolishness, because that's what your people do. And I guess they too smart too, but goddamn it, they was getting them. They getting them now. <sighs> I don't need to say nothing else. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but they people have made that a sense of shame. Oh, you getting food stamps. Yeah, your dumb ass is paying full price for yours. You know, I always say, shoot, give me a car. Get give me a car. I mean, groceries is high. You know, don't I say that all the time to me? Just yep. give me fifty dollars worth. That don't a hundred dollars would make a difference for me. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. I, I'm just like, come on, y'all, because uh, military people get food stamps. How dumb are they? Eighty percent of the military stamps. qualifies for food stamps. That is a fact. What? Like, <laughs> know what you're talking about before you come on here with these dumb ass comments? Because I'm gonna get your ass. Don't come on here doing it while I'm right here. Please don't. And nobody dumb. This this is reality. Life is hard. They in the military. They work. Guess what? They go to school, they got houses, they got medical benefits, and they damn sure get food stamps. And then, and then here's the thing. We give over $300, $400 uh, billion to Israel. They have universal health care, and they have free education. And but we can't thing, get that here. Right. And, and the other thing, too, is y'all know who the biggest benefactor of uh, uh, government assistance is? Whether it's food stamps, Medi-Cal, housing, y'all know who the biggest benefactor is. Corliss, you, you know, you just don't know because I'm about to tell you, but you know, it's Walmart. Walmart is the biggest benefactor of governmental assistance. And some of y'all probably saying how, right? The Walmart heirs are more wealthier than the whole 99% uh, class of America, right? They're, they put them the heirs of uh, Walt, Sam Walter together. They're worth more than all the 99% put together, right? So you're probably saying, how is it that they're the biggest benefactor of welfare? Well, because most of the employees that work for Walmart cannot afford to live on the salary they make, even if it's a 40 hour work week. So most of Walmart's employees are getting either food stamps and or cash aid, Medi-Cal, housing or something, making Walmart the biggest benefactor, yeah. right? And they, and they get a tax write-off for hiring people that get food stamps. Or um, what are they? Formal um, military. They have you sign a document that says, do you receive uh, government any type of government assistance? Sign this document and guess what? They send it right on over there to the good old people that give us all these food stamps and stuff. Not now, because I don't get them now. Wish I did. Corliss, hold on. Is your mic covered? It is now. Uh, say it's talk now. Is that better? Oh, yes. We, it's okay. Better. Yeah, so they, they get a payoff for how you cover it up again. Is it? I don't know if you have your hand on it. Oh, probably so. Better. No, but, but they are. So when you go for orientation, that's the first thing they ask you. Do you receive food stamps, Medicaid? When was the last time? Are you in the military? 
Are you an ex felon? How long have you been out of prison? Oh, all of that. And they get a whole big tax write off for it. Two, on the top of everything else that they get. Right. So, it's and Michael, you said <laughs> you want to come up. There's no need to come up. Um, I know you meant well, but sometimes, you know, it, it just behooves us to sit and listen and kind of, you know, it, it, uh, maybe get some knowledge of what we're trying to say. Uh, because if you knew that, then you, you may not have made that comment. I'm hoping you would not have made that comment. But the misconception to it is, I'm not saying you were saying this, but the misconception is that it's, you know, oh, black people are mostly on welfare. You got to remember, anytime you talk about black people in America, you always have to put disproportionately in front of it because we are least in population. And sometimes we are, um, there's a lot of us that may do something or whatever, but it's white people that benefits the most from it. Everybody that comes over here, regardless of where they come from, they going right to this uh, Department of Social Services office because they 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 know that before they get over here. We go right to the Department of Social Services and we sign up for everything. We getting free Medicare, we getting food stamps, we getting housing, we getting cash aid, and we gonna set up shop right. And there's no shame for them, but you know, a, a welfare social services is actually for people who need it, right? It, it's a it's, it's TANF. Temporary uh, assistance for needy families. That's the that's what it is. Temporary assistance to help people get a leg up. Now, of course, if you want to have a conversation about some people who may be on and don't need to be, that's a different conversation. But yeah, there's there's people from all walks of life that have had to go get a food stamp card to simply put food on their table. You'd be surprised. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy that that we bring that up because now you have these illegal immigrants and migrants that have come here. And the food that has been provided for them by these cities ain't good enough. They said they want to eat their own food. So they're going to give them a thousand dollar card so, so they can buy the food that they want to buy. Now, for those of us that have applied for food stamps and whatever, when did they ever give us a choice? You don't even qualify. They, they, with no questions asked. If you make a dollar over whatever the qualification is, you don't get it. They can care less. If you have a job, you're penalized because... See, to me, the, the whole food stamp system is upside down because you could have nothing, no job or nothing, and they'll give you the food stamps and, you know, nobody wants to starve or whatever. Okay, great. Give them the food stamps. Fine. But what it's supposed to be is this. You were supposed to hold a job and then you, let's say like Demetra, she has a job, she's doing her thing, right? But, you know, she's just a little short when it comes to the food. She pays all the bills, but you look at her budget, she needs like another $300. Yeah, then you give her $300 so she can, you know, feed herself and do whatever thing she's got to do and supplement that. But I know people who've never worked a day in their damn life and they're getting $800 on the food stamp card and just wasting the damn thing. And I'm just looking like this. Wait a minute. You're going to benefit somebody who isn't even trying, but the person that's working and, and doing everything that they can, you're going to deny them benefits because they have a job or they make too much money over the whatever the threshold is. To me, if you got a job and you need a little government assistance, an extra hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, yeah, give it to them. But if you have no job, you're going to give them almost a thousand dollars. Come on now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. Uh, Jago, you say Elon Musk is a welfare queen. Yes. Tesla <laughs> was funded by taxpayer dollars. He barely used any of his money. That is a prime example of a welfare queen. Right. <clears throat> she will. Jeff Bezos is one, too, you know, and cool breeze. How you doing? He says, and I still believe Walmart copied uh, of a store in Michigan called uh, Myers. He says, because that's how the store is set up. I grew up go uh, going to that store. Yeah, I've heard of Myers. And Corliss, I sent you the link on your uh, messenger. Let me know if you get it there. Um, and let's see. Uh, 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 skip on down. Black America says he don't know because he's not black. Yeah, you know, uh, there's a lot of people too. Unfortunately, they, you read the memos out there and, you know, they kind of go with it and it's ill-advised. That's why I try, me personally, it's a personal model of mine. If I don't know what I'm talking about. I just don't speak on it, you know, until I get further knowledge of what it is that's going on. I think, just think that's wise. Right. But, but see, this is the image that the American media project, projects overseas, believe it or not. 
this is what they project about black people. We're dependent, we're, we're, you know, we're on welfare, we're street thugs, our women are whores, and so on, so on, so forth, and so on, you know, and whatever, which is so far from the truth. And it's amazing that when these people come here and they actually see what they were told is totally different than what the fact is, then they're in shock. They're in shock. We're all supposed to be criminals and all this other stuff, but then we're in shock. Okay. And another good example is let's say uh, the passport bros, right? Well, whoever these guys are, uh, you got to have money to travel. Demetra knows that. People that travel know that. You got to have money to travel. So a lot of a lot of the disparity. But then again, and I'm not downing the Asian community because that's the community I was raised in. It is deafening the silence that they see when uh, injustice is done to black people and how they say nothing. And a lot of my Asian friends that are on Facebook that, that, that watch my channel and see me, I tell it to them all the time. It is deafening the silence that when you see injustice going on and what I'm talking about, they don't even make a comment. So again, survival of the fittest. And Michael, you say, uh, he's talking easy, but he says, I apologize because Demetri uh, always emphasizes uh, doing for self in the black community. I understand that you're upset with my comments. You do understand that Demetri emphasizes doing for self. Yeah, um, everybody should do for self. But again, you know, with all due respect, your people, um, they do for self, but they do they self right up in that the welfare office, getting what there is to get. You know what I mean? And of course, you know, they do other stuff with it and take care of their, their family because all your people... Now, when I say your people, uh, uh, I should say Asians because I know it's, it's different, you know, types of Asians. Uh, they don't always come over here with a, a boat full of money. And they go right to the social services office and they sign up for all that stuff, you know, and, they, and they, there's no shame in the game with them. And they go swipe the EBT card and all that other stuff. Yeah, and they get up on their feet or whatever the case is. But, you know, uh, doing for self is the ultimate goal. But some people are not in a position to do for self right now. And I hate that too. People think, well, you shouldn't be dependent on the, on the government. Well, if you got hungry children and you could go get food stamps, you're going to say, nah, I ain't going to do it because there's some shame or I'm going to try to do for self. No, nah, you're going to go and get your EBT card. And so you can put food on the table because it's harder to try to figure out a game plan when you hungry, your children are hungry, you know, trying to figure out what we're going to eat. It's, but it's easier when your stomach is full, you got resources for right now to figure out the next move. But yeah, that doing for self also means if I can go down there and get me some temporary help, I'm going to do that. Well, and, and, and let me add on to this. Whenever I hear other cultures talk about that bullshit, do for self, uh, you know, you should be on the, or not, not do for self, but uh, uh, you shouldn't depend on the government, whatever. Show me another culture other than the FBAs who were enslaved here in the United States. If you're an enslaved person, who do you depend on for your housing, your living, your food, and everything? You depend on the slave master. After slavery and the Civil War, Black people were, they said, you're free, go. Now, this is during the time they were giving free land to Europeans out in the West, right? Didn't give the Black man nothing. Said, just go, you're free. Name me another group who has come to this country involuntarily, involuntarily, in chains, and it wasn't dependent on the, uh, their master or whoever to support them. So if you come from a lineage like that, that is the lineage that you are dependent on. It's just how it is. It's easy to come from another country where you're fleeing and you get here and you have your own culture where you guys were warriors or whatever your situation was. You came here by choice. It's easy for you to look down on people and say, why aren't they pulling themselves up there by their bootstraps? Hey, this is a system that keeps the slave in a position to where we're at. Once you understand that, then maybe you will understand. Because I guarantee you, if I go to a country, especially Asian countries, and you're a dark-skinned Asian, or let, let's go to India. You're a dark-skinned Indian. They have class systems. It is what it is, right? They're born into what they're born into. And you guys think that's fair. But that's where they were born. They weren't brought in chains to another country and said, OK, we're going to provide this, this and this for you. And you work and do what we say and whatever deal is. When you go through that experience, then you come back and tell me that you don't have a, a PTSD, 
post-traumatic slave disorder? Let me um, just drop some a, a, a good thought for y'all. We the government, think about it. We depending on our own damn selves, if you think about it. We pay taxes. So if we qualify for something. Why would we not go get the money that we didn't put into? Because by the time we get to the age to get it anyway, we're going to be dead or the line going to be so far fetched to the front. You ain't never going to see it. So, no, Michael, we're not depending on the government because we are the government. Without our tax dollars, they ain't getting too damn far. If everybody in this country stopped paying taxes, didn't pay taxes, you couldn't take out taxes, it would crumble. So we are depending basically on ourselves. If we work, why the hell we can't go get food stamps that they going to go get to somebody else because they're using our money anyway? We paying the taxes. Make it make sense. And the other thing, like Donovan said, <clears throat> you know, they flee. So a lot of people flee their country, come over here and talk about how they were able to make a goal of it. And we did this. And we pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps. It's like, but you didn't pull yourself up by the bootstraps where you was at. But all of a sudden you come over here and you got these magical bootstraps that black people, for some reason, just won't pull up. Like, it's like. The people say it like the, our, our bootstraps are just on the ground, right? It's like, all you got to do is just bend over and pick them up. Like, first of all, we ain't even got no boots, okay? And when we got try no to boots. Get, right. When we try to get the boots, then them folks is like, oh, those are our boots. Don't make your boots. Keep walking barefoot and you're about to make something out of yourself, right? Because we know that institutional systemic racism does exist. But we never want to have that conversation about us However, as Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we do need to do for self. Marcus Garvey said, up you mighty nation, accomplish what you will. Because nobody, for the most part, is making us give away all of our money. We keep 3% of all the money we make in America as Black Americans. Only 3% of $1.7 trillion. Some of that is on us, right? Because... You may not need to go get your nails done if you can't find your folks or whatever. You then you might say, Well, let me get in, you know, a filing board or you know, so I, I don't know, you know, try to keep it in the house as much as you can. There's things that we buy and we just don't need. Black people spend the most money on stuff that we don't that that that's not a necessity. As my dad always says, unfortunately, we have gotten to be a people that buy what we want and beg for what we need. Our ancestors weren't like that. They had everything they needed. And because they took care of the stuff they needed, they were able to go get some of the things they want. Hey, we're going to the local holdown. We're going to take all the family, going to get dressed up, going to take and buy us a turkey leg piece. You know, <laughs> they did stuff like that. They didn't do it every day. You know, we're in a society now where people eat out every day or couple times a week and Corliss and Donovan we're all old enough to remember back in the day our people didn't eat out every day you might have a treat you know your mama or whatever they want to cook she might have took you to McDonald's but other than that Pioneer's chicken McDonald's at the house Pioneer's you know? chicken Demetra Pioneer's chicken yeah I remember Pioneer's chicken but when we ate out it was a treat like okay and we got dressed up you know whatever for the most part and we went out to eat but for the most part your family cooked at home. And th this is the, ooh, we old. This is how we, I'm going to tell y'all how old we are. Y'all remember your mama used to buy the whole chicken and cut it up? They didn't have the chicken cut up. You, they had to go get the chicken and cut it up and gut it and everything. Take all the, the, the gizzards and stuff up out of there. Now people are spoiled. They got the chicken cut up. And I'm old enough. To remember y'all are too y'all ain't that much younger than me i remember when we first got our first microwave yes me too and other than before that your black ass was the microwave take that meat out when you get out of school so that way when i come home i can make dinner wait wait remember when, when, when you didn't take it out in time you had to put the water in the sink <laughs> and put the thing in the water to defrost it faster you talking about being forceful? Because that ass whooping was about to be a plenty if, if, if then it wasn't going to be made because you was playing around and take that meat out. 
No, how about I remember my grandma used to send my my aunties them in the backyard to go get the chicken and wring the neck. Okay, pluck the feathers with the hot water. Yeah, that part right there. I oh. couldn't eat that chicken because well, I think think about, this. In the backyard. think about this. I know a lot of, a lot of us are, originate from the South, which we do. But you had people that were, were cooking critter back in the day. You know, they were cooking critter. You go out there in the woods, you go kill it, bring it home, and you know, they do what hey, they do. Hey, we, hey, we from Southern California, we didn't cook no critters. <laughs> oh no, my daddy did. My daddy had me, he said, Here, take this pot next door. I said, This pot heavy. He said, That's a possum. I said, The one with teeth. Right, that part right there. He opened critter. it up we're almost. And a famous. lot of us are still doing it. Oh no, raccoon, squirrel. I'm like, no, nah, nah. everything but the oink on the pig. We're still doing it. No, they eat the snoop. They eat the snoop too. A lot of rock bar. Okay, I am so happy. I was born into the nation. We didn't mess with the pig. Okay, and we damn sure wasn't eating no pig lips. Was not going to be doing that. Okay, my daddy didn't even leave us with his relatives. They ate uh, pork because he knew they was going to try to feed it to us. So he was like, I don't trust y'all. We couldn't even eat Oreos back in the day because Oreos had lecithin, which was, a, you know, has is a derivative of pork. We couldn't even eat that. So, yeah, we wasn't eating no critters. <laughs> Brother Sam says there's a, uh, uh, there is a uh, difference in using available money than depending on others taking care of you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's a you know, see, see and, and this is one of the things that that really as black people, we have to start getting. It's obvious that we are out here by ourselves. These people have this misconception of us and how how we roll. They come, you know, if, and let's think about it like this. If it wasn't for black people fighting those civil rights movement, these people weren't, wouldn't even be allowed to come into the country. If black people weren't pushing for that, that was black people that opened the doors for these other groups to come in. Then they come in here, then they shit on us. And, you know, me personally, I get tired of it. I, I really do get tired of it. But those are the facts. There was a time where there was only so many Asians allowed to be in here. So many this, so many that, so many that. And it, was, it wasn't for black people always coming to everybody else's rescue. They wouldn't be here. Then they get here, do for themselves and put themselves above us and then shit on us talking about, hey, why can't y'all do this? Why can't y'all do that? Why can't y'all do this? Well, damn, you just jumped on my back to get over the damn wall. You know what I just thought about too? While Michael was talking about you too smart, you ain't gotta be a genius to go in there and fill out no application because it come in everybody like it, it, any language you can think about, that application comes in. Oh, what do you speak, Mandarin? Oh, press number one. What do you speak, this, this, and this? Push number two. And if they ain't got it, they're going to find somebody to fit you. Right. Go to their country and see if they're going to accommodate you like that. Yeah, they're going to accommodate happen. your ass right to that, that door. Right. Right on the back of there. Yeah, because like I said, a lot of countries is like, oh, you coming over here? Do you have a me a way to take care of yourself? You got some income? Nah, I ain't, but I was gonna head right over to the welfare office, you know, after I got over from immigration to see what I could get. Cause they ask you, what you doing here? Who you coming to see? Where you staying? Reason for your visit, all of that. If you weren't born there, you will never own land there in a lot of these countries. You will never own land there. So again. Do we got it messed up or do they got it messed up? But they could come here and buy all kinds of land. The Chinese own almost half of uh, more than half of Washington, D.C. Mike says, remember to wash that meat with vinegar, lime or lemon juice. Corliss, you a chef. What's your opinion on this? Because I see people arguing about wash the meat, not to wash the meat. What's your what's your expert opinion? You better wash it. You better stop eating it. <laughs> That's the truth. Cause they killing you with the meat. I stopped eating meat December 31st. I think that was the best thing. Y'all see, I'm still fat too. <laughs> you better stop. I done lost a whole bunch of weight, but you can't pay me to eat it. I won't eat it. I don't care what you washing it with. Lime, lemon, baking soda, 
bacon, whatever, dishwashing liquid. <laughs> I don't care. Like before when I ate meat, yes, you have to wash it. Like it goes through the whole process. The stores don't clean it. Half the time, y'all for real, the store is selling y'all bad meat. And that's the honest to God truth. Like nothing is fresh unless you see them actually go in there and um kill these animals themselves then you don't know what you're getting for real like it's it's really bad but yeah wash it for the most part you're gonna wash out the outside but the inside still ain't no good so with all the contamination even the yeah. fish and stuff the nuclear stuff like that but, mm -hmm. but, but but here's another thing real quick that that um i i think is important too we spend, I think it's like $600 million a year in teaching these people English when they come here for free. Now, I don't know about you guys community and where I'm, you know, where I'm from. When I see a young black person, uh, even a white kid sometimes, I, you know, they're teenagers. And I'm saying, well, you know, why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Oh, I've been you know, trying. I've been, you know, putting applications, putting applications out, right? Why aren't these kids... Do you know what all of these teenagers tell me, what, you know, especially when they're black and like some of the, the white kids, whatever, not all of them, but some of the white kids, what they tell me is why, why they can't find employment. They can't speak Spanish. Why is it that we do not have a program to where people who want to learn Spanish could learn it so that they can get jobs? Even the adults, you got some adults that are unemployed. They can't get jobs because the employer would prefer you to be bilingual, but yet we have languages for these people to learn English, to come here and learn English, but there's nothing for us to learn Spanish. So I, I, I would say if you're a parent, you go to student, um, you go to parent teacher conferences or uh, board meetings, whatever, bring that up and say, why don't we have a dual immersion program in your school system? There should be a place where I should go for free where I can learn Spanish. And don't tell me go to college, because by the time you get to college, take the course at college, they want you to already have some Spanish one or two done from high school. So that's another thing that, that puts black people at a disadvantage. Again, show me another group of people who came here and their identity was stripped from them, their language was stripped from them. Only the FBA where we were stripped of our language and we were forced to learn English. Yeah, I always watch the meat. Uh, absolutely. How do you watch ground beef? Very carefully. I, honestly, you can you do <laughs> you can. I put when I used to make ground beef, I would put it in a pan. I would put water in it. I would cook it. I would dump it out, rinse it, and then season it. Okay, it can be done. But like you said too, I mean, it's not even just meat. It's the vegetables. It's everything. Everything. Everything has got something in it. If you're not really, and they said hell, even some of the seeds. Are contaminated. Oh, absolutely. So you do, y'all have seen it where they're now talking about um putting vaccine vaccinations in the food. I said, you know what? I'm so sick of y'all. I'm just gonna give me a pot and put it in the backyard. I got a whole bunch of seeds and I'm gonna just start putting them right on out there and I have to grow my own stuff. Cause it's we I don't know what this world coming to. You want to vaccinate people food if we don't want to take that foolishness. Well, we'll make sure that the doses are, we don't want it. We got enough problems. I mean, like you said, too, the hormones in the food and, you know, all that other stuff. It, it's crazy because um, you really just don't know what they're doing. And a lot of the stuff that they allow in the food here in America, they don't allow in other countries. They It's, it's banned, right? And I think California just outlawed uh, red dye number 30 something. Yeah. Yeah, they just outlawed that. It's like, well, mm -hmm. what's been doing to people up until now? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, especially when it comes to, to, to the vegetables, you guys have really got to wash that because in some of these countries, they don't have the fertilizer. They're using human fertilizer, basically, if you guys know where I'm going, in some of these countries. So you got to wash that food and the bacteria is, is really, really, really bad. So. <clears throat> so Donovan, you saw that, what is it? It's in Orange County? The um the company that they have cleaning sewer water, sewage, full sewage water, yeah. right? With human feces and all kind of stuff. They're sending it through this machine. For real. It was all over the news. I was just disgusted. 
and they're making it into drinking water. Yeah, the so the guy from the it, yeah. Channel 11 News was like, he was like, oh, it looks clean. It, it smells like water. So he take a little sip. I wouldn't give a damn what you put in there and how many purifications. You're not paying me to drink nobody's shitty water. <laughs> The other thing, you know, is are we already drinking it? You know? D, <laughs> don't say that. Well, I, I, I hope the spring well that mine comes from. <laughs> I mean, you got a company, sorry, I was about to start coughing, it's getting late. Uh, PepsiCo, if you ever go to any store, especially here in Houston, when there's going to be tornadoes and, hur and hurricanes and thunderstorms at the same time, you know, people go to the store and they get all the water they can off the shelf. Do you know what water is always left on the shelf last? Take a guess. It's a brand of water. Oh, uh, Dasani. I'm going to see if somebody is going to put it in here. You said it's a brand of water? Uh-huh. Blue Avion. Avion? 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 Avion is typically kind of the some of the last to go only because of price, but not because of quality. Oh, it's got to be Dasani Arrowhead. <clears throat> Let me see if somebody put it in here. I know not sparklets. Their water is terrible. Aquafina. Aquafina for real? Y'all know why Aquafina was put up? Uh, uh, see, this is all about knowing. Aquafina is made is a product of PepsiCo. Uh, Dasani is a, a, a product of Coke. Okay. Aquafina, uh, PepsiCo was telling people, oh, it's from the source, it's from the spring, it's from the child, it's from a factory in Fontana. Good, boss. That's right. Yeah, right. Off the factory top. in right. Fontana. And they got sued because they were misleading people, telling them that it's from the spring. It's, you know, this, that, the other, and it's from a factory in Fontana, California. And so most people who know that, they don't buy it. Plus, I think taste. Dasani, I think, is one of the last ones, too. But Aquafina, if you think of lying, when there's this mad rush, you know, especially like when the pandemic happened, I remember going to the store and getting water, and Aquafina was the last water that was on the shelf because of that it's, it's it's bottled at a plant in fontana it was anyway i don't know if it's yeah, i remember that i remember that. that that was a big uh scandal going on stuff like yeah. that and they're charging all them prices and you see the guy just putting it in the tap coming into the bottle it's like wait right. a minute <laughs> well, they were lying um uh crystal glazier <laughs> that's my water right there that's spring water so a lot of times people go and buy all that. You know what? I'm, I'm tired of being on this show and you are not telling the truth. You know, when you were in Japan, you were drinking that Mount Fuji and it was so good. I, it, oh, yeah. Because Mount Fuji, you know, the actual mountain, we went to Mount Fuji. And they uh, when we went down a little bit, they have a stream of water coming from Mount Fuji. And you could put your water bottle there for free and fill it up and get the water. It was It was amazing. Uh. See, that's what they're telling y'all. They get they're putting in them bottles. We get it straight from the source, but they're getting it straight from the speaker at a warehouse. <laughs> but spring water is alkaline water. So you don't have to go specifically buy alkaline water because you know it's a little bit more pricey. But spring water by nature is alkaline water. Just so you know. You if you're going out there, you know, spending a bunch of money on alkaline water, all you got to do is buy spring. It'll, it'll do the same thing. I won't drink anything but spring water. I don't. I don't drink anything other. If I drink distilled or purified, it's probably because maybe I'm out somewhere and that's all they got, and I'm thirsty. But that's the only way I will drink any other water other than uh, spring water. If it ain't spring, I ain't drinking it. But always so, keep some distilled water in a gallon thing, whatever. In case your battery dies or something, you need water in there like that. Keep keep some distilled on the side just in case. I keep a house full of distilled water. And spring water. Yeah, um, I, I guess I got to do a little bit more. I, I did reach a distilled water. It says not bad for you. I guess this is like the process they take it through. Um, but spring water is just that it's supposed to be anyway, right? And, it, and it, it's uh, the closest to alkaline in any of the other waters. And alkaline is supposed to be better for your body. Michael, you say, Demetra, I understand why you moved to Texas. Texas bad economy and racism in California. That ain't why I moved in. 
okay? I'm a California girl born and raised, okay? I came to Houston for other reasons. I was about to say, where he get his information from? Um, that, I mean, there's honestly, there's racism everywhere. There's no place a black person could go in America and say, whoo, ain't no racism here. It's racism everywhere. California, yes, yeah, racist. But see, the thing about California, people tend to think there's no racism in California because, you know, it's the sunshine state, I guess, if that's what it's called. And, you know, uh, the trees and the beaches and, you know, everybody just kind of, you know, they hanging loose. I know that's for Hawaii. But they chill in California. Now there's racism. Fontana, California got the Klan, baby. They got the Klan. I live right up the street from Fontana, right California. There in Fontana, right there. Fontucky got the Klan. You know, there's a lot of places in California that got the Klan. Orange County got the Klan. But guess what? If I drive my black ass too far up the road to Vider, Texas, they got that's a sun downtown. Don't have your black ass there. Uh, when the sun goes down, so it's it's racist racism everywhere, and this is the problem that I have with people say Donald Trump, he 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 on a MAGA crowd, they racist. I'm good. I want to know they racist. I want to know the races I'm dealing with. I don't want to go to some you know uh um uh uh a Cypress, California, and you know be dealing with somebody, and they're like, oh how you doing today? Oh can I take your order? Yeah, give me some, you know, a, 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 a croissant or whatever. Because, you know, you eating croissants and lattes in California. And they go back in the kitchen and be like, yeah, there's a nigger sitting at table 10. You give them the croissant well, and well, then bring it back. Well, Demetri, you, you you also forgot the, the author of the, the, di, uh, what, the Turner Diaries right there in Fallbrook, California, in front of Camp Pendleton on the back side of Camp Pendleton uh, Marine Corps Base. Right there, the uh, the white Aryan nation was formed right there. California is full of racists. I mean, it, it's funny how we get this misconception that oh, California is so liberal, and it you know it it's liberal, but not when it comes to black people. Yeah, and, and Bernie, thank you so much, yeah, for the donations. I think we're at the point of no return time to utilize uh, your Second Amendment, uh, build close community similar to Amish community, and prepare. You know, we tried to do that before, but then folks like. What you doing over there? We don't send the white woman over there. Well, no, we, we had our own communities and the only United States citizens that were bombed on by their own government was out there in Oklahoma and all those 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 towns out there. So again, prosperous right. United States citizens were attacked by their own government. That's a fact. And Michael, so over here in good old Texas, right? I had some good old white neighbors too, and I don't know who or what they thought I was. Called the police. This is a few years back. Oh, they egged my house and uh, Karen, and they did this. And here come the damn police, right? I said, all they asses is straight. Don't come up over here with that tomfoolery, with that Karen and eggs in my house. And you ain't got no cameras on your house, but because your house got egg, this the niggas on the corner. Stop playing with me. So I had to give the officers a good earful of what Karen had to say to my children and how we were um, smoking dope and, you know, we crack heads and I'm going to blow your effing brains out and this, this, and this. But see, when the police came over, they weren't, um, what do you say, neutral? They weren't, you know, oh, well, she said, I don't give a damn what she said. Let me hear, let me show you what she said, okay? So when I showed him what she said, her and her husband, he said, oh, he clutched his pearls and he ain't even had none on. <laughs> oh, ma'am. I'm so sorry that this happened to you. I said, no, don't be sorry. Just tell them she ain't dealing with no dumb niggas. Okay? Because that's what she called us. So when they get an earful of, I'm going to blow your effing head off to some children. Because I made my kids... Yeah, I, I made my kids record everything. So you got to hear her good Karen tell right on on this message. And oh, so now we trot on back across the street. And guess what? The next month they move, right? You know why? Because see, I have some proof. Don't come over here fooling with me because I don't bother nobody. I say to myself, but I'm not no fool at the end of the day. Right. 
Yeah, so, <clears throat> oh, yes, racism everywhere. You just got to, you know, watch your six. Make sure you're on alert. Like you said, we do live in a day and age where you better record it because had you not, it would have been their word against yours simply on the strip of them being white. And, you know, most of the uh, California uh, police officers, hell, police force anywhere is racist. They do not like black people, <laughs> you know, and they're going to side with they people. Yeah, red. Oh, yes, Redlands. Oh, that's where them folks are at. You are you up in Redlands? Yeah, what you doing over here? Yeah, and that's right up the street from where I live. Yeah, I used to go to Redlands all the time. Yeah, they you know because they had a vegan restaurant there. Uh, back then it wasn't a lot of vegan restaurants everywhere, so I would go there and give me you know some vegan food or whatever the case is. But yeah, Redlands, that's where them folks live. It's very white there. Glendale, yep, Glendale. Sundown as well, mm -hmm. California. For all of you guys that have not seen the movie Karen, because I just watched that the other day. Dimitri, y'all seen that? I haven't seen it. Baby, look here. She didn't even have to play that role, baby. That was her. That I, was crazy. I like I was, was parody. Like, I thought it was a parody at first, like it was fake. <laughs> No, it's real. Like, and I watched it and I kept saying, what is this? So I said, let me watch it. Girl, I was just like, oh, I wanted to jump through there, girl, and beat her myself. <laughs> just disrespectful. Just, they, Karen, like, yeah, you need to watch it. Oh, I've, I've dealt with some Karens before, trust me. <clears throat> on the job and everything. That's why I said I would never work for a white woman as long as I live. I, I'd stop short of bissonette before I did that. And uh, Dr. David, thank you so much for the sticker. I love and appreciate you for that. And I also saw what you said about the plastic. Yeah, be very careful drinking out of plastic, especially if you leave it in a car, hot garage, because the chemicals from the plastic can seep into the water. You go, um, and I learned this from my dad, obviously being in the nation, you go to you know certain white neighborhoods, First of all, they don't have like liquor stores, you know, like the Kona store up in Beverly Hills. But in most of their stores, they got glass bottles that they get their water um, out of. It's all about knowing. So absolutely. And Mike says, I love Texas. Very homey feel to it. Um, I'm getting used to Texas. You know, it's, it's hard to, when you're in California, you, 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 I think you're a little bit on the spoil side. And when you move away from it, it's like, wow. I used to be at Venice, but before I did my Sunday shows um, that I do every Sunday, I was at Venice Beach. I was at the drum circle. Now, I wasn't smoking no weed, but, you know, if you close to it, you get into contact, right? You uh, could Venice always Beach, find Demetra at the skating part over there doing her little skating thing with her little drumsticks running nah, around. Muscle Beach, baby. <laughs> muscle Beach. <laughs> I, I stop over to Muscle Beach. I got a picture. One day I'm going to put it up uh, of me. With the fellas, and they had all their muscles going on and all of that. Uh, yeah, but Venice Beach, that's where I was at every Sunday. Let's go. So, but you know, Texas is all right, it's just not a lot to do. Um, and then if you go like to downtown or midtown and all that, it's just bars, right? It's like bars and it's the party scene. It's like, well, where do grown people go? Because even the grown people, they smoking hookah and you know. Cigars and all that, like where the grown and sexy people go, where you can, you know, have a little conversation. No, no. To me, the South, everybody is, is into competitive eating. That's what it seems like to me. Is there is there an Olympic uh, <laughs> uh, stop. game? Because it's it's like either you go to Walmart, you go to a restaurant. I remember when I was there, and I was there a couple of days ago, and. I wake up. Okay, let, let's go get us a grit bowl. We go to whatever to go to go get the grit bowl, right? Then. You get the grip bowl, you sit maybe an hour or two something, you do something else. Okay, let's go to lunch. Then you're eating. Then you, you sit back after done eating, and then it's time to eat again. It's like you're just constantly eating there, and you're like, golly, what, what can we do other than eat? Listen, when I moved to Texas, I gained like 30 pounds. Now, mind you, I moved in the middle of the pandemic, so you really wasn't going out and about like that. In California, I'm an active girl. I go up and down the mountain sometimes three days at times a day, right? Not even to tell you the truth. I, I would I would do that. I was very active. Up on a damn hill. Up and down <laughs> that damn hill. I was active. Running. Me and my homegirl, Sharon, 
Like we was about that life, but then I got here. It's like, ain't y'all ain't got no sidewalks like that to where you can just go walking nowhere. Girl, they ain't going walking nowhere anyway. They too damn big. You know what? See, I'm just saying it's the truth. We we slim out here, and I'm a big girl, honey, and I'm slim because I be seeing Donovan. I be like, damn, you right, eating up everything, yeah. and dudes just loving it. I say, oh, they big and unhealthy. No, mm -mm. no. <laughs> well, it ain't, if that's what you choose to be, let me just say this: if that's what you choose to be, and that's what your man like, so be it. Yeah, yeah, because it's funny. whenever somebody from the south comes to California, they always complain about, oh, the girls, they ain't eating out here. They're so small. <laughs> well, we're smaller people. We're active people in the West. Yeah. <laughs> we BBLs just BBLs are not very TV. popular in California, fellas. BBLs are not very popular out here. Yeah. Um, listen, no shade to nobody, okay? Because I do know that people look different in different parts of the country, right? People do. In the South, they like women think and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, because in California, and my smallest, I was 143. Now, most people is like, that's a little too small, right? But out here, I'm like, damn, I, I, ain't no man going to want no woman that little out here, you know? So I'm like, I, I probably won't get to 143, you know, or nowhere near it. Because for me, that's small, right? That's, you know, is this isn't a, really a, little too, a little bit too small. Um, but yeah, the, um, I went to a concert here. I told you all this before. House of Blues. Went to see my girl, Victoria Monet. Very excited because I love her. Got to the House of Blues. And, you know, there's no particular seating unless you're getting on the balcony, whatever. I didn't know they were selling balcony seats. Got in there in Houston. It was just like, you're like this, right? And I'd imagine it wasn't to capacity. So I couldn't hardly see Victoria. I saw little glimpses of her because there were so many people in there. I'm at the back of the room. I honestly was about to walk out. My daughter's like, we're not leaving. I said, I don't care about these tickets. I'm not staying here. Because people smoking weed. It was just, it was a mess. So I sat there and I thought, now, if this concert was in California, it probably wouldn't have been packed like that because Californians are just a little bit on the smaller side, right? So I thought the House of Blues, they need to account for that. Y'all got 1,200 people in here, but some people like two people. You know, so I thought I might suggest that to them. Hey, if we was to be trying to get a body in a stampede, it'd be like some buffaloes. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying. I was scared. I'm, I, I was. So I would never go to another concert. I'm lying. I'm going to go see Chris Brown in July. But that's at the arena, though. I hope I didn't offend nobody. They say sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs> I'm just saying. And you know what, Miss Lachey? Frankie Beverly played at the house. What's going on? Yeah, he's retiring. And God dang it. Elder Bar is going to be here with him during the farewell tour. I think the OJs. And you know where I'm going to be? I'm going to be in Vegas. It's my birthday weekend. Watching Mariah Carey, it never fails. It seems like me and Elle can never be in the same place at the same time. It never fails. Never. I need to meet this man before he leaves. He probably gonna leave before me. Or before I leave. I'm just saying. Anybody know Elle? Tell him I'm, I just wanna have a conversation. I just wanna... You know, have a little flossy drink. We stuff. are going to get L on the show to so you can do an interview with him, and I'm, I'm gonna get you to hook up. I'm I'm trying to hook you up with him best I can. Isn't there like a celebrity thing where you can like pay to have him call her? And tell him I, let's make a wish or something. Tell him yeah. I tell him I'm dying to see him. Okay, lead so pause before you say I'm, to see him. Say she's dying. She's dying. Wait, 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 R real quick. Only Pamela's way says he got 11 children. Demetra, what's your answer to that? They grown. <laughs> he ain't got no little kids no more. 
He could have 20 children, Pamela. It won't matter to Demetri. It won't matter. I beat him cheering step mama. <laughs> Just call me Mama D. Everybody calls me Mama D. It's okay. <laughs> I'll be Dem Demetri, you gotta have to come up with another one because it's already a mama D and she ain't got no, she don't have a good rep. <laughs> I was on Instagram today and do you know I kid you not, Mama D got a diss song. My if she just de debuted it, to, I don't even know how I seen the song, but it's Mama D got to be 79. She ain't she scrappy mama or somebody. When I tell you, she I don't know who she was talking about, but she called her 511 hoes and you a thirsty bee and you this. I'm like, Mama D, you as old as Methuselah's mama. And you talking about people calling people hoes. She probably talking about a little scrappy baby mama. <laughs> a this song from a geriatric woman. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like the older lady that was on um was she on Jennifer Hudson's show? She goes and stands in the bathroom and she get ready for her husband to come home with all the gray hair and honey, he gonna flip me and I'ma be spinning from the I said, okay, girl, okay. And was for real, <laughs> was not playing. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, keep your man happy, right? L is not under no damn underpass. <laughs> Y'all wild it. Don't do L, okay? Don't do L. Okay, he didn't have a little mishaps in life. You know, sometimes crack happens. It does, right? Sometimes you go through some things, but he means well. Now, you know, he needs, if y'all see him, tell him all this love is waiting for you. Okay? T tell him. I'm here. You don't have to look no more. Roz, how you doing? Says, do we need to go uh, go for me to get L? It, please and thank you. Please, I'm sure he 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 he's probably you know his asking fee probably ain't that much nowadays. Because last time I heard his his tags were expired, so he'd probably take a couple bucks. I'm sure he would. You know, let's let's yeah, let's do that. Hey, Thunder. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, don't judge me. Uh, easy say, D, does uh, he get all that caboose? Yeah, I want to know what's so weird. I don't have a detraction like that to Elder Barge. Is that weird? I don't see us like rolling around in the hay. To get, I, I never see, I don't see him like that. It's just, it's, it's like I have a crush on him, but it's not like that. If that makes any sense, you, you just want him to sing to you. Who holding Demetra now? L, <laughs> L. <laughs> he did. He had Spire tags on a Mercedes. It was a Mercedes though. I don't know how in California. You know, it's probably a lot of money. Um, you ever thought of things? I don't know, Demetra. They say he's still on that dust. You know, I had I saw I had an opportunity to see L one time at the Citizens Arena in uh, Ontario. And he was with a whole bunch of acts. Him and Faith were supposed to sing uh, their song, um, Lay With You. It's my jam, right? And L kept coming out on stage and he kept like doing the robot. And they kept on trying to put him at the, you know, the, the piano. And he would sit there and he would kind of plunk on the keys a little bit. And he'd get up and he was incoherent. I said, Tell me, he ain't high. Is he high? He was high as a kite. He didn't even perform. And so he wandered back out on stage. And he says, where is Faith? Where my baby at? Where?" Because they were supposed to sing the song. And Faith was like, shit, you got me messed up. I ain't going out there with you. Needless to say, he didn't sing. But that was the only time I got a chance to see Elder Bar. I was looking cute. I'll count. Let me see. Matter of fact, let me see. I'm trying to find the picture that I had um, when I went to see L. I was looking good too. Let me see. Damn it. Where is it? 
Oh man, I don't know where it is. But I, I was looking really nice. And was he, he was he high like um young thugs, one of the witnesses the other day? You know what? <laughs> Shout out to the homies. Shout out to the homie because the homie he knew, did that. He the, the 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 homie knew that if I get on here and say I'm high. I'm at inadmissible as a witness. Absolutely. I said, oh, that was so smart. He was a cold character. That's what I said. Shot. They gave Young Thug and gave him some money, didn't they? <laughs> they gave him some money. They was like, man, get up there. He said, man, I'm about to fall to see. Can y'all give me some water? I'm, I'm, I'm high. Oh, I don't even know what y'all talk about. I said, man. <laughs> Shout I out. That. I said, I know that's right. I said, you ain't going to get him. No, sir. And you know, they said that's the longest case in history in Georgia. Yeah. And, and that's Fonnie Willis trying to do that. Girl, Fonnie, they need to sit her tail down somewhere because she is horrific. She really is. She's a piece of, she a piece of something too. Y'all need to stop going against the sisterhood. Y'all supposed to stick together. You know, yeah, I'm sleeping with a married man, but I'm in the church and I want the blessing of the church and all that. Other. It, it's sad. And I keep all my money wherever I lay my head. I said, girl, if you don't shut up, you ain't had no money like that over there getting the money from the people sliding in somewhere else. Stop that contracts. Right. Today. Stop it today. <laughs> okay, let me see. I'm trying to find the picture. I think I found it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. <clears throat> oh, I can't find it. But yeah, I was I was looking great. And I was like, he not even going to be able to see me. Shame on it all. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> we're going to get out of here. I know we've been on here a very long time. Love and appreciate you, Corliss, for coming up here, chopping it up with us. Love and appreciate you guys. Facebook X um, and YouTube, you are on the other side of the conversation. Next time we'll open up the link. We'll be back here Sunday, God willing. Um, and I don't know what we'll talk about, but I'm sure it'll be uh, just as fun. In the meantime, you guys, please enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. Um, and we'll see y'all Sunday. Peace.